Howdy. Um, uh, hi, how? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can, actually. Excellent. Well, you said howdy, so I guess I should do my uh, Bo of the Fifth Column impersonation. Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. There we go. Now we've, now we've, we've established the tone of the, <laughs> uh, of the conversation. How are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm doing okay. Doing okay today. Uh, wonderful. So I hear you had some disagreements. I think you believed yeah. uh, race mixing should be banned or something. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I wouldn't uh, go quite that far. Um, so just, I guess just to start things off, uh, you call me Tony. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. And um, no, I do not think that uh, interracial relationships should be banned. Uh, I'm a lefty, left-wing libertarian, so anything that can't be demonstrated to cause direct harm to someone else or who isn't that isn't co uh, coercive, uh, obviously should not be banned in any shape or form. But I think that the problems of interracial relationships are sort of glossed over a lot of times in more leftist and liberal circles. And I think in a lot of the uh, information that you, or, or conversations that you've had recently concerning uh, interracial relationships and race mixing are uh, naive at best. And uh, there are a few things there that I took issue with. Oh, hit me up. Okay, so uh, one... It seems to me that a lot of people on the left, uh, and like I said, I am a leftist, so, you know, but a lot of people on the left uh, tend to believe that interracial relationships are somehow some sort of solution to a lot of the problems. I've heard this from not only um, in conversations you've had recently, but also from people like Bo of the Fifth Column, who will say, like, I can't wait until we're all, you know, some shade of brown so that uh, a lot of this, you know, white supremacy stuff will go away. Uh, the problem is, is that that's not going to happen. That will never happen, even if everyone does become brown. You only need to look at places like Brazil and other places in South America where most of the population is uh, in mixed race uh, or in interracial uh, groups, and they still have uh, a lot of problems in regards to, uh, um, well, colorism, which becomes just as bad as uh, white supremacy in those areas. Your proximity to whiteness is uh, what becomes a, a very important factor in how you're treated in society. Yeah, can I, uh, I, I, I want to address that if I may. Um, colorism remains an issue, but I do believe that colorism isn't as bad, potentially, as uh, interracial racism. Um, in, in large part because total exclusion from society is no longer really on the table once race has become sufficiently intermixed. Um, if there's total separation between the racial groups, uh, th there is, there's kind of like a, a relatively clear demarcation along which um, legislation, policy can be drawn. Uh, but, you know, once a sufficient degree of intermixing has taken place, you know, even within a, a colorist society, there can be people of different skin tones in the same family, you know? A white and a black parent together can produce one dark-skinned child, one light-skinned child, one child who looks practically white. Um, I, so I, I think I, I, the, the circumstances make it more difficult to enact broader state oppression. Not impossible, it's still an issue, only that I do think it's like broadly better than like total uh, racial separatism. Well, on the point uh, you mentioned with, you know, a black parent and a white parent can produce different, uh, different tone children. I, I understand that uh, uh, pretty well. Uh, I am mixed race um, and uh, my brother is darker than I am. I'm sort of a middle shade. And then my sister, uh, she's lighter than me. So the joke we always say is my mother was running out of toner. Um, <laughs> so yes, I do understand that um, different uh, interracial couples can produce different, uh, different tones of uh, children. However, um, I would actually argue that being a mixed race person, based on my own experience, I can't uh, speak for the whole world, obviously, I'm not a sociologist, but uh, I do notice that there are actually a lot more problems in being mixed race than there are in being monoracial, even among um, groups of people of color. And in this case, I'm talking about black people because I am half black. And so the idea that colorism is not going to be as bad as white supremacy or, you know, intra-racial racism or whatever is, again, I, I think that's a very naive view because of the way that I and many other mixed race people have been treated by the 
POC group that we are also associated with. And many times, many cases, that treatment is actually worse in a lot of ways than how I've been treated by, by white people. And so there is a, there is a, I, an animosity um, in the black community against people who are mixed race, particularly people who are mixed race with a white person. Uh, that you will see a lot. <laughs> you don't have to be a mixed race person for a few days to know that. <laughs> but so, um, I, I don't. I don't disagree that this is something that exists. Even on social media, it's pretty clear that there are there's a a mixed attitude towards mixed race people. The, the The difference, though, like the the critical difference, is that like it's you're filing it in a different category because of where it comes from, right? So white people don't really have an issue with mixed race people because when white people are racist, they're racist against black people and black people like includes mixed race people. So like the, the, so if we're to think like who gives mixed race people more shit, white or black people, if we're thinking of mixed race people, like as a, as a unique and distinct identity, I would say black people give mixed race people more shit than white people. But if we're thinking a mixed race person, what are they going to get more shit from? Black people who are giving them shit for being mixed race or white people giving them shit for being black? The answer would be the latter because mixed race people to a white racist would be categorized under black person. So they would be kind of filed under the broader racial paradigm. And while in this country, colorism is an issue, it is not colorism that produced slavery or apartheid uh, or the Jim Crow laws or any such thing, you know? It's, um, it's, it's, it's racism, like um, intra or interracial racism. So I, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's more like you have a, there's a more specific subcategory that you fall under that black people get more up in arms about. But the broader paradigm, I still think is, is, is one which, which is, which is, you know, favorable towards miscegenation um, in the long run. I would, I would actually argue a couple of things there, uh, different. Um, uh, that, that was a very smart sounding sentence, I know. Um, but what I would argue is that I, I live in the deep South. So, uh, <laughs> I, I have a, a, a close, uh, close awareness of the worldviews of a lot of different, uh, uh, white individuals and, and white groups, uh, down here, as well as the black groups that are, that are down here and more consistently, far more consistently, I face more racial discrimination, or I guess you could call it racial uh, animosity. I'll just use the word animosity because, you know, discrimination implies some sort of power dynamic. I have experienced far more racial animosity from black people than white people, even white people who are in the, you know, make America great again, Trump crowd. And the reason for that, I believe, is because white people in general are afraid of being called racist. So even a white person who is racist, they are a MAGA Republican, you know, racist, they don't want to be called one. And so they'll be more accepting of someone, particularly someone like me who is mixed, because uh, they, they don't want to come off as, as racist and we get to know each other. And the thing about getting to know people, it's sort of like that guy, I forget his name, but he's a black guy who goes around and he basically like, he converts KKK members or something like that. Like there was this guy who was, you know who I'm talking about? Yes. Though I think people have um, been skeptical of the effectiveness of his method. Okay. Well, the, be that as it may, um, by communicating and talking with people, eventually you get past the whole color thing. And when people find out that, Oh, you know, I'm a Brown guy, but um, forgive me for saying this, but I like NASCAR and um, I like, uh, I like, uh, uh, metal music and you know you know that sort of thing and we have common interests you know the the color kind of disappears whereas when i'm talking to black people the opposite is true they because black people are able to be racist more openly without any sort of societal repercussions they are more likely to be open about the fact that they don't like me because i'm mixed race they are more open more or vocal. Like there was one instance, uh, if you allow me to it, it tell a short story here, um, I was in class and in, it was in college. And so there was an older student. She was uh, probably in her 50s and she was, she's white. And she asked me, this was during the, um, 
you know, well, during the current era. So, you know, everything was going on. And basically she asked, is racism really as bad as we're hearing on the news and on the internet? And I said, um, I said, racism is pretty bad, uh, but it's not as bad as it once was. And before I could finish my sentence, um, a couple of black students stood up and made it a very clear point to tell me that I didn't have the right to say anything in regards to how race dynamics work in the United States because of the way I look. He said, because your parent is white, at least one of them, you don't experience racism. And because you don't really experience racism, you don't actually have a means of telling other people, uh, particularly white people, that they're getting better. I, Never mind um, the fact that, go right ahead. Oh, no, I just want to say, do you think this might be a proximity bias? Like, think of, um, think of like, a, like a trans person on Twitter with neo-pronouns or whatever. The majority of the shit that person is going to get for their neo-pronouns is probably going to be from other left-adjacent trans or at least trans supportive people um because we tend to get the most shit from the groups that are proximate to us i'd be willing to bet most of the people in my community who are trans whether or not they have neo pronouns probably get more tr shit from other disagreeing trans people than they do from like the broader establishment of transphobia what you're describing right now are functionally microaggressions right but they can't e they don't even compare to like the broader scope of institutional racism um you know like if if you're if you're mixed race and you're in like a black community or whatever, you're constantly surrounded by black people, some of whom might have negative opinions towards mixed race people, explicit or implicit. Um, but like you know, it's small fish in a big pond, right? Like the the shadow <laughs> of of white hegemony looms over um, all of these interactions. Uh, so it's it, I think it's it's important to sort of contextualize that. Um, because outside your day-to-day -day interactions, you know, colorism has never produced slavery in this country. Yeah, actually, um, um, I, I, I wholeheartedly disagree on that. Um, so slavery began it, – it, slavery began um, – first, you had religious slavery, right? So Christians, primarily Catholics uh, in Europe, were able to enslave pe different peoples, right, because they weren't Christian. Because according to their worldview, it would be immoral to enslave – uh, fellow Christians. When I say Christian, I mean Catholic and Christian are interchangeable here. But of course, there was the Great Schism in Christianity, and you had the Protestant you know, movement. And it became more and more difficult over the course of time as Catholics and Protestants began to find common ground with each other. Uh, not perfect common ground. Obviously, there were wars and you know people were killed and it was terrible. But over the course of you know many, many decades and centuries, Protestants and Catholics began to find common ground, and it became more difficult for the leadership of these different churches, the Anglicans and the Lutherans and the uh, Catholics, to justify enslaving other Christians. And so at that time, there was the unchristian and the Christian, and in the Muslim world, there was the, the Muslim and the not-Muslim. And you can enslave the not-Muslim or the not-Christian, but you can't enslave people that are in your in-group. But as... Uh, Time went on, and black people from Africa <laughs> became uh, more exposed to the Christian uh, uh, religion. The black people obviously started to become Christian, which is what tends to happen when you're you know inundated by uh, a religion brought about to you by massive colonial powers. And people began to wonder, how can we keep enslaving these black people when they're Christians now? And many of these black slaves who were also who were Christian were uniting with white slaves who were Christian, and they were becoming a, a movement against the, the powers that be. And so the powers that be decided, well, what we need to do is find a way of differentiating between the, uh, the Africans and the, and the uh, Europeans who were enslaved. And so it was essentially colorism. It was like the only difference we have here is one is darker than the other. And so it started off as the darker people are lesser. The darker people are a problem. And that's how slavery racial slavery sort of started and then eventually I, the concept do you mind yes. if i jump in here yes right ahead the modern conceptualization of race didn't even exist back then i don't know if it's necessarily fair to draw a comparison i mean you could argue that colorism like has a ha, like 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 or or, or like um he, hemo you know hemo discrimination was a product of like aristotle's belief that the northernmost tribes had thinner blood and were therefore stupider or something um it, it i don't i don't think um I don't think this necessarily tracks. Like, 
in the, when, in the world when I, today where we live right now, like broader policies on discrimination along racial lines are done for race, not for right, like but the skin reason, tone but, within race. But, but, right, but, 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 but the, even then, we, we, we have to acknowledge this is tangential, right? The real conversation we're having here is on miscegenation and interracial relationships. Depending on where you draw the line for what it even means to be colorist, you can end up just defining racism over again anyway. Because if the colorism is between darker skinned people and lighter skinned people, eventually you're just describing white supremacy in other terms. What I'm thinking of right now is like, has black people giving mixed race kids shit ever amounted to the kind of social harm as broader white supremacy against black people? To which the answer is clearly no. Well, of course, of course not. That's because in Western world, black people just don't have that power. I don't, I don't believe that white people are like some kind of special breed of evil that, you know, would, would be the only ones who would ever do that. I think if the, the script were flipped the other way, black people would be just as willing to commit atrocities against white people as, as, as white people are against black people. It's about power, um, not about race. And so what I mean to say is that colorism evolved into what we call racism today. And so interracial relationships are not going to stop racism from emerging. Uh, otherwise, uh, we wouldn't have it now. <laughs> we would have just kept enslaving Christians and or non-Christians or whatever. It, we, we had to come up with some kind of difference. And the difference is always going to be color. No one is, there's never going to be a time where we're all the same color. You know, that's impossible uh, genetically. That's just not going to happen. What will happen is that there will be different lineages of people, just like you had in the past, um, that will form uh, different groups, you know, because we're a tribal tribal group, we're apes, you know, so we like to have tribes. And so all we're going to do is just redefine who's the best and who's not. So interracial marriage isn't going to solve that problem. Yeah, It's not going to go away. It's, it's here so because it's part of the human condition. It's not about solving the problem, and I've never claimed that it could, you know? Um, I'm just in favor of people having kids with whoever they want and loving whoever they want to love. Um, I do think that if people's lineages and people's histories and geographic and genetic markers are all intermixed, uh, it's much harder to discriminate against people broadly. And I do think that's pretty easy to demonstrate because one of the most important priorities of essentially every apartheid state is to maintain a uh, genetic um, and geographic distinction between the groups that they're trying to keep in separate categories. It's easier to discriminate when you have clear categories. It's much harder to discriminate along racial lines when, uh, you know, everyone's uh, intermixed. I, I don't think that but solves not, but any But not problem. impossible. But, no, but not impossible, as we saw in, for instance, say, you know, Nazi Germany, a, a white, a, a European Jew, it doesn't necessarily look any different than a another European who's not a Jew, yet six million of them were terminated. So, <laughs> yeah, but that wasn't a race thing necessarily. That was an oh. anti-Semitic thing. <laughs> well, no, that... what? Wait, no, it was. Uh, Jewish converts were, were sent to the, the gas chambers as well. It wasn't just because well, of the descendancies well, of the 12 tribes of Israel. It was... Of, of um, course, of course. I mean, there were there were a lot of other things going on, like, you know, homosexuals were sent to the gas chambers as well. What I mean is that the the Jewish people were discriminated against definitely on racial lines so says the nazi literature i mean it's well, the, like the nazi the nazi <laughs> literature like racialized everything um as nazis are, are are want to do but again i feel like we're, we're conflating terms here um i never said that it makes it impossible to discriminate against a group of people if you intermarry um and i i you know i, I don't i don't think it's like, like the counter argument to that is like well the nazis managed to do the holocaust like that's true they did Though it's kind of non-falsifiable, right? Like, how many descendants of the tw of the tribes of Israel do you think intermarried with non-Israeli, um, uh, 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 like ethnic groups, and then ended up having kids like seventeen generations down the line who weren't Holocausted, right? Like, think about it. You can't know, but there had to have been plenty of people who um, Hitler would have considered, you know, a Jew, who would have intermarried with non-Jews, and then after enough, like. Uh, uh, intermarriage between, uh, you know, them and subsequent non-Jews, they wouldn't have been targeted for the Holocaust because there no longer would have been a distinguishable um, ethnic or religious tie. What, what we're essentially doing is we're, we're kind of doing like a survivor bias thing here, right? Like any Jews who were still socially, ethnically, and religiously distinct enough to be targeted for the Holocaust were targeted, but who knows how many weren't distinct enough because they'd intermarried over the thousands of years since... Um, uh, since the um, 
uh, you, you know, since the, uh, the, the, the tribes of Israel. I, I, I can see what you're saying there. You're basically saying that your point is that it makes it more difficult because intermarriage makes things more difficult for someone who's a, let's say, a purist yeah, to but even distinguish. If it didn't, I'd still believe people should marry who they want. Well, I, again, I, I, I agree as well. I do think people should be able to marry uh, uh, whoever they want. Uh, but the, yes, the, uh, I don't know how long this conversation has been. We were, we were already on Nazis. That's pretty, pretty awesome. <laughs> it tends to move. Um, well. <laughs> but um, as far as, um, I remember in our initial email, um, the whole point was, I mentioned, I don't think that interracial uh, relationships are inherently as loving as uh, intra-racial relationships. You said they were if less you wanted loving. To, yeah, less loving. Yeah, they're less loving. I didn't. I, I actually I actually don't think they are. I think most of the time interracial relationships, not all, of course, but most of the time interracial relationships are based on either um, racial stereotypes or um, <laughs> fetishes, <laughs> to put it in that way. You really think, think that? Honestly, yes. Um, based on what I've seen in, in my life and with the people who I know or in interracial relationships. Again, I'm not a sociologist. I haven't unfortunately done a really big study. Um, I'm in the hard sciences, not the uh, not the social sciences. But uh, I think the a I think that the interracial relationships are based mostly on fetishes and um, racial uh, racial bias. Yes. Just I I mean I don't even know how you could falsify that. So I'm not entirely sure how to approach that argument. But I don't well, like I don't, I don't know why that would. So wait, hold on. First of all, there's kind of a conflation happening here. So even if I were to accept the premise that it's pretty common for interracial relationships to at least be like, have like rooted in a, a kind of like interracial fetishism, that doesn't necessarily make the relationship less loving, right? Like even if the blonde white lady loves getting railed with BBC while she screams about it or whatever, like that doesn't necessarily make it less loving. That just means that there's a, a fetishized element of the relationship. I don't think it's a fetishized element. I think the relationship itself is a fetish. I don't think they're actually in love with the person. They're in love with what the person is. And you hear this a lot with particularly monoracial people because they have the ability to say this when they say things like, I have a predilection for black women or I have a predilection for Asian girls or I, I like black men or whatever. Um, like, what wait, they're doing. Doesn't that, that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't care about the person. Like, if a person prefers brunette hair, then it, it's not like, oh, you don't really love me. You just love the brunette hair that I am. Like, it, like that, the that difference, could mean the difference, be, the difference between having a preference for someone who has a particular colored hair and someone who is black or is Asian or is whatever, the inherent difference is that hair color, although you can't genetically change it, you can technically change your hair color, right, with dye or whatever. And there are people who will be really excited by that. Say if you like blondes and someone dyes their hair blonde and they look really good, people will really like that, regardless of whether or not they're a natural blonde. People find that attractive because they like that color hair. You know, you, a, a black woman can't just, you know, not be black. Any white person can't not be white. But it's still just what a preference, up, right? Like, it, like well, it, even if the preference was really fetishized, I just don't think that makes the relationship less loving, you know? Well, it like I said, it, it it's more it's not love, it's more lust. And I get it that in human relationships there is going to be a lot of lust. Um, but there's also something deeper than just the lust. With interracial relationships, what I tend to see, again, I'm only a master of my own experience. What I tend to see is people who take a racial stereotype about a person, whether that's um, Black women are, you know, strong and independent or whatever. I know that's a very good stereotype to talk about, right? Um, or um, black men have big dicks or, you know, whatever it is. And that is the aspect of that person that they like. What I tend to see, which is most, what I tend to see what is most toxic is actually the fetishization of white people by people of color. Because I think that usually stems from some sort of self-hatred, uh, a hatred of their own racial group. You hear this a lot with, say, black women who are into white men. And, and if you have a you know, meaningful conversation with them, a lot of times what it gets down to is sort of like it, the, the mask comes off and they're like, I like white men because I want to be with a guy who's not going to dump me. 
he's not going to just leave me after he gets me pregnant. He's not going, he's going to have a job. He, you know, ha- he, he, he doesn't have saggy pants and, you know, can speak proper English. And that's sort of what you hear. And then you hear that with, with black men too, talking about why they like white women. You, you talk to them for a while. Eventually it comes down to black women are ratchet and black women are uh, domineering and they're too controlling. What they're doing is they're taking these negative racial stereotypes about their own group that they don't want to be a part of and then sublimating that onto the entire group and then hoping that by getting with a white person, they will be more white by association, which is what it seems to me. I agree that that happens, and I think it's bad that it does happen, but I don't think that makes any relationship, which is a product of those views, any inherently less loving. I think that at the end of the day, whether it's racialized or not, a lot of people do tend to like fall for tropes or stereotypes or broad characteristics that we see in others like you know there's like the tall dark and handsome uh kind of like it's like sort of a stereotypical collection of characteristics that you know women are said to fall for or whatever but when you think of like well uh you know people like surfer dudes or like people like the more outdoorsy athletic types or like some people like the more like anime hikikomori whatever is you know with the modern zany world we live in i think people because we're all so complicated it's important when we're looking for people um to be friends with or to spend time with or to be partners with we we look for people who are kind of like representatives of collections of archetypes that we're fond of but i don't think that necessarily cheapens our feelings towards those people once we get to know them better you know even if like even if you had like even if you really wanted like an anime manga loving gf and or you know like a, a fujoshi gf or whatever and then you got one and you continued to like that about her i don't think that means you love her less it just means that you correctly identified an archetype that you enjoyed, um, that, I think that, that she you, I happens think, to fit. I think what you've, you've, you've just kind of helped me elucidate the point a little bit there. Being an outdoorsman or being into anime or being a surfer type, that can, be, that can exist apart from your ethnicity. Anybody can be a surfer guy. Anybody can like anime. Anybody can be an outdoorsman. Those are personality types. Being black is not a personality type. It is not a trait that someone can pick up, put on and off. It is a fit. Realistically, though, like people are what they are, right? Like I'm a geek or I, I'm a gamer or whatever. Like I probably am going to die one too. Obviously, it's not as immutable as races in like a socially perceptive sense. But like if a person was with me because I was white and a person was with me because I was a gamer, both of them would continue to see those traits manifest in me up until I died or they died. Like, you know what I mean? Like, one of the, it's it, like, I, I get you what know, you, I people get what aren't you that mean. impermeable in like reality, you know? I, I get what you mean, but the difference is if I'm in a relationship with someone because they're a NASCAR fan, right? I like NASCAR, they like NASCAR. So that's not going to have any effect or a rather a negligible effect on the result of a relationship, assuming that relationship would be heterosexual and that the two people want to have children. And as a mixed race person, this is kind of personal to me. Um, if I had two parents or anyone had two parents that liked NASCAR and they took me to NASCAR races and I learned to like NASCAR, that's not a, that's not detrimental at all to my well being, unless you're, unless you're a formula one fan and you think that nascar is lame (laughs) um but if you are with someone say a a black person is with a white person because they have certain views of black people say it's a black woman with a white man and they're with a white man because they believe that white men are better they're more stable they're uh they're smarter they are are more professional they're less likely to be abusive yada 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 that kind of thing and she has a child. Well, guess what? In the eyes of the world, that child is going to be black. And let's say it's a black male. This woman who's with this white guy has these worldviews about black men. And she's going to sublimate those views unconsciously or consciously onto her child. And that is going to have a tremendous negative effect, especially when that kid comes to the realization he is in fact black, not white, at least in the eyes of the world. And that is why it is much different from saying, oh, I like someone who likes NASCAR. Saying I like someone because they're black is 
there's really no comparison between those two things. But isn't that what, what you're criticizing there is the racism, not the interracial nature of the relationship. I agree that if you have racist attitudes towards um, what it means to be white or black, that and that like you could pass that down to your kids and that'd be bad. But I would believe that for non-interracial relationship. Like I don't want two white parents to have a white kid and then teach that white kid white supremacy either, you know? That's like the same... That's the that's the same basic problem, just from the other <laughs> from the other side of the field. Um, it it is the same basic problem. However, the effect on that white kid is not going to be as great mentally because they're a white kid, right? If gonna, a white kid socially, it'll be destructive because that white kid is going to be part of the broader power structure, and his beliefs and biases are going to inform whatever he does in the future, whether he stays. I mean, that, or that, that assumes that a, that. A, that assumes that he's going to be a part of the broader power structure just by virtue of him being white. But, but that's, I mean, but, but, the... that's, but that's how it works, right? Passing racist beliefs from white family to white family is literally how all of these systems have perpetuated themselves. Um, like slavery continued to exist for hundreds of years because white family would teach white children about how they're naturally better than black people. Again, historically, like the consequences of this passing down of racist beliefs, it's probably worse, like in monoracial relationships than interracial relationships just because of the nature of how people have generally been kept separate throughout history at least modern history uh you know depending on the categories that you're trying to, to prescribe but this is about racism too like if, the, if if we're talking about people being racist and teaching racism that's bad but if a person just has a preference for like a like a, a like a member of a racial group or we're even assuming that too we don't even know that every person who is in an interracial relationship has like some specific preference. I'm sure that's And, and that's case. why I did be sure to make the caveat that it's not all interracial relationships. I mean, if you just so happen to meet someone who has personality traits that align with yours and they happen to be a different race from you, then I don't have a problem with that. I, 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 don't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bat an eye at it. That's fantastic. My problem is when someone says, I have a predilection for black people or i have a predilection for asian people because asian people is not a personality trait asian people there's you know there's more than a billion of them you know they they have different personalities but it's an aesthetic, and so not every right like there were no. aesthetic characteristics associated with racial groups what if a person liked uh tall people or um or what if they said like i think it's hot when people have like um thick lips like that's a characteristic generally associated with black people you know i don't know i mean if you've seen some Filipinos have some thick lips too. <laughs> well, darker skinned people. But you know, when, when people think like, well, oh, here are some characteristics, right? Like, or bigger lips or like um, a wider nose or whatever. Like, you know, it, it's possible for white or non-black people to have these characteristics. Um, I, I understand. I understand but, but that. But what if what they I'm just like that? What if they, what if just like, oh. you know, I like, I like, uh, 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 like, like kinky hair. And I like the big lips, and I think that's cool. So I think that Any, black anyone, are... anyone, anyone who says they like kinky hair clearly does not have kinky hair because if they did, they would absolutely hate having kinky hair. <laughs> well, sure, they like. I think they, they mean like they like they like fucking somebody with with the kinky hair, right? Oh wow, well, well uh, it still it straight hair is better. <laughs> Speaking well, as a person who has kinky hair, <laughs> I, uh, um, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure there are people who would who would contend that, um, but. But, but, but you what know I'm what saying, I mean. What right? I'm saying is there was this there was a documentary. I don't remember the title, but it was um, covering this with um, interracial relationships in like the Asian community. And, you know, it's sort of a stereotype, uh, the Asian woman with a white guy. You know, um, I don't know if you're aware of the uh, um, plight of the Asian male in the sexual market, um, but um, they unfortunately have gotten the short end of that. Um, but. It was basically it was a matchmaker, and basically the Asian women would come to her and they would describe, you know, the kind of guy that they'd want to be with, as you do when you go to a matchmaker, and they would put a copy out as saying they wanted a white guy. And for the longest time, this matchmaker didn't think anything of it. But eventually, she began to realize that they weren't actually interested in a white guy. They were interested in a career professional who would treat them well and yada, yada, yada. And what they were doing was they were taking their negative experiences that they had had with perhaps their fathers or uncles or cousins or whatever, and were then sublimating that onto all Asian men. And so she would ask them, if I could find an Asian guy who is all of those characteristics that you just said, would you go out with them? And a lot of them would say no. And with people of color in particular, when they say, hey, you know, I have a predilection for white people or I have a predilection for whatever, it's not that, oh, yeah, they can say it's the aesthetic values and whatnot. And I say this as a person who used to have a 
predilection. You know, I used to have a predilection for um, uh, people who are of Southeast Asian descent. And it wasn't until I realized why I had a predilection for people of Southeast Asian descent that, um, that that predilection went away. So basically, what I, I had a friend in school when I was being bullied who was Southeast Asian, and she was really nice to me and super friendly to me. And so I associated friendliness with, you know, Southeast Asian women. And so I was like, oh, wow. So I like Southeast Asian women because they're friendly. Well, no, they're not. Some of them are mean. Some of them are terrible. Um, there are personality traits that transcend all races. So to say you have a predilection for one race because I like them because, you know, they're this way, or I like thick lips, or I like wide hips, or I like tall men, or I like, it's like that, there's so much genetic diversity among the human race that any ethnic group will fit that description. I, I <laughs> so, agree, I agree with what you're saying that it's, it's problematic for people to bundle archetypes into, um, you know, ethnic or racial groups, and then like, look for people based on that. Um, I guess, I guess the issue that I have is that I feel like even if you do those things that I think are bad, I don't think that necessarily means racism, and I don't necessarily think that means there's any less love in the relationship. Even if you're pursuing a black guy or a white girl or whatever, based on stereotypes that you have about that group, I don't think that diminishes the love that you have for the other person, like, potentially. Um, it, now, obviously, I think that racism is bad, and I don't think that people should have broad negative attitudes towards different racial groups or, you know, engage in, like, uh, 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 like, like selection bias based on like weird stereotyping or anything like that. Um, but that, I think all that can happen even within a monoracial relationship. Even if you just have two black people getting together or two white people getting together, it's not as though, like you can look historically, you know, uh, white father, white mother have produced plenty of, uh, racist children <laughs> in their relationship. You know, the ideology, it's not, oh, it's no not kidding. It, right. Yeah. So it's not, so it doesn't, it seem, it doesn't seem like interracial relationships produce more racism if anything the opposite is the case because all the stats that we have on um oh no no i i, I don't think that interracial relationships produce more racism i think i think the problems that interracial relationships cause are different from monoracial relationships and are pretty serious but people hand wave them away because they're like oh well you know this is going to like totally cure racism in like a thousand years when everyone's brown um, it, it's particularly for mixed race people who are never a part of the conversation. It's I, I always mono. I, I just, I don't think they cause any pro. I don't think a mono or interracial relationship causes problems. I don't think we should think about it that way. People are going to love who they love. There are very progressive people who are very pro, you know, um, racial equality who end up in like white, white relationships. And then there are like racist guys who are white, who will end up with black wives or whatever. Like, it, it, everything can happen, you know? I don't, I don't think the relationship itself is what's causing the problems. It's attitudes that we bring into it. But I don't think those <laughs> attitudes necessarily affect or diminish the love experience between interracial couples. Because all the negatives that you're referring to happen in all kinds of relationships. And even the ones that pertain to interracial relationships, um, I don't think that, like, affects the love involved, you know? Well, I mean, I get the love, define love, right? That's really tough to do. We can't really define that. It's something Sincere that Sincere interpersonal we, affection? We, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's what I mean. I mean, it's like, it, 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 it's all, it's one of those that things that's all things to all people. I mean, people will call something love, you know, you know, and other people will say that's not love. So it, it, it's difficult to de debate over that. What I mean by, are they generally less loving? I guess I mean that they are generally Interracial relationships generally happen, not because someone finds someone else attractive as a human being, but because someone finds them attractive because they are black, because they are white, because they are Asian. And these, I wouldn't call it racism. It's, and they believe this because of racial bias. And then that racial bias gets sublimated onto mixed race kids who, like I said before, are always completely ignored. And I just, I don't think this is as common as what you say. Like, I I'm willing to bet that in a lot of interracial relationships, they probably like fetishize an element of the interracial nature just because race dynamics are such a prominent part of our culture that they're going to come up anyway. And for something to come up all the time outside the bedroom, it probably comes up at least a little bit in the bedroom too. Um, but I don't think the, the idea of like, 
you know, an interracial relationship where they don't love the person, they just love the race they are. Like, I just, I don't think that that's the, I don't think it's that common at all. I, you know, I, like that, that's a degree of like depersonalization that I just don't think happens in like at all, like in any statistically significant sense in any kind of relationship, really. I guess maybe in like one night stands, maybe, because you don't really have to know the person. But outside that, I just don't think it happens. I, I think I see this is this is the only this is the reason why I when I first uh, t decided to go get my bachelor's I was going to go in for sociology because I really wanted to do a big study on this but sociology was so boring uh, so I changed majors but um the there I think there does need to be a study on on this because based on the interactions I've had with people in interracial relationships and as a mixed race person people in interracial relationships get really comfortable talking to me because they think I inherently just love interracial relationships so much. <laughs> uh, a lot of times the fetishization aspect is the main character trait of their relationship. And I, and it how seems like they don't even that? see that. What do you mean? How could a kid know that? <laughs> how could, how could a child know that of their parents? How could they possibly know that the main element of their relationship and the driving force behind their mutual feelings is racial fetishization. Kids are pretty, pretty perceptive. Yeah, um, but kids, are, kids are, <laughs> kids are also like, like susceptible to bias more so than adults are. And adults are really susceptible to bias. Don't you think there's a possibility that the kinds of people who are mixed race, who want to talk about their mixed race experiences, might also be the kinds of people who are somewhat embittered by the perceptions they have of the problems with being mixed race, and therefore they might be more likely to find, identify, and attribute these issues, even though they're non-falsifiable and there's no way to actually know what's going on in the minds of their parents? Well, I think anyone who's willing to talk about an issue is probably a little embittered. I mean, obviously, you know, like some people like, you know, gas prices when they were really high. A lot of people were talking about gas prices. I didn't really talk about it all that much um, because, you know, I fill up the tank once a week and it just wasn't that, that big a deal for me. I wasn't driving around a whole, whole heck of a lot. So yeah, people are going to, people who are going to talk about an issue are going to talk about it primarily because it is an issue for them. But I think that kids are more able than people give credit for being able to recognize when mom and dad's relationship is based on race. For instance, when you have a white parent who exclusively, like, as a kid, if you hear a white parent say something along the lines of, um, you see an attractive actress in a movie, and then they say, oh, th that person looks pretty good for a white woman. Wait a minute. You're white too. Why, why would you make it a distinction? It, you know, that's something you would expect a black guy to say or an Asian guy to say or whatever, someone who's not white. But if you hear that or, you know, same thing for if you hear, you know, your black parents say something about, that, about a white person or a black person rather, and they say, oh, they're, they're, they're pretty good looking for a black person. Um, these are conversations that happen because a lot of people who get into interracial relationships don't do any introspection and find out why is it that I am – attracted to this person's race. I'm not attracted to this person. I'm attracted to their race. Wait, but like, wait, that's, wait, wait, wait. That's you, a just, problem. you just made a jump though. How do you know they're not attracted to the person? Like I'm attracted to goth aesthetics, but if I had a goth GF, like I wouldn't have to unpack why I like the goth aesthetic so that I could get to the bottom of why I like the goth aesthetic, but not the person. Like you just, you did a jump there. Like Let's say let's I, let's let's take for granted that they're engaging in racial fetishization, which I don't think is that common, um, at least not to a significant extent. You know, some degree of conversation or, or engagement, but like let's say they're engaging in a significant amount of racial fetishization. Like, how does that translate to not liking the person? I don't think there's like there's any detriment there. Like, you like a, a something that a person is in this case their race, um, and you like that person. I mean, like you can like something that a person is and like that person they're not mutually exclusive they tend to complement each other what do you elaborate on that what do you mean by they tend to complement each other like if you like what a person is often that means you like them because they are the thing that you like like those aren't separate categories it's the same category like if if i if i said like um y you know like um i i like this person because they're tenacious and hard working like i wouldn't think like 
well, I like the fact that they're tenacious and hardworking, but do I really like them? It's like, well, no, I like them because I like the things that they are. If a person likes, like, white girls or whatever, then you would, like, if they like that they're a white girl, then that would contribute to them liking her, like, as a person. The, the, the reason that we like people is because we like a composite of their traits, right? There is no abstract person outside the characteristics in a person. All we can do is interact with the characteristics we see. Um, right, and, and, and if I'm, we and like I'm not those saying that characteristics. We, and, I'm, and I'm not saying that we should do anything other. Um, what I am saying is that if someone is attractive, like physically attractive, oh, that person looks pretty, for instance. Um, any person can look aesthetically attractive. The traits that you're mentioning, like being a goth, that is not, they didn't come out of the womb as a goth. They came out of the womb as, you know, whatever they are, ethnically or whatever. Them and being they can tall, put... then. Let's just say them being tall. I like tall chicks. So let's just go with that then. Okay. Okay. So being tall, okay, I'd still call that a form of fetishization if the if the main reason why you approached this person was because they were tall if the main reason why you want to embark on a relationship with this person is because they're tall and i'm not talking about just like a one night stand you're I'm talking about like a the main reason like you don't know that um not that that's that's why i always say not all there are of course some interracial relationships which are not based on their race but you're assuming but the it's ones like the majority that, like like the way you're talking you're talking like it's this massively but, pervasive yeah. thing I don't think that's like, the yeah. case, but like the characteristic might be the main reason that you like engage with them initially, right? Like if there was a really tall chick at a party who I thought was hot, like I might go up to her and start talking with her because she's tall and I find that hot. But the more you get to know a person, the more you get to like them beyond that. But I would never stop like liking the fact that she's tall. Like I could, I could have a wife for, for of eight years and like I'd be slapping her ass and talking about my tall wife, my, my stock wife, you know, my, uh, my stilt wife or whatever. Like, maybe if you were hearing all of that, you'd hear like, uh, like, oh, he only likes her because she's tall. And it's like, no, I like her. Yeah, I also like the fact that she's tall. I just bring it up a lot, you know? I just find it strange where if someone brings up someone's race as like, say, a negative thing a lot, that's horrible, which I agree with. But if someone is bringing up someone's race and they mean it, I guess, in an endearing way, that's supposed to be boiling someone down to their race to prevent them from going to college is bad. Boiling someone down to their race so that you can get them in bed, that's good. Like, I don't understand why. But, but they're not boiling them down to your race. That's an inference that you're making. Like, I, like um, I've, I've been in relationships with black women for whom, like, ev like, every conversation would have some, like, white boy, black girl joke or whatever. Or she would call Yeah, herself... and that's really weird. Okay. That is I mean, super weird. Right. You can, I mean, it's, it's, you're free to think that, but like in terms of my actual perception of her, um, it didn't have much to do with her race. It was just like, I don't know. I, I feel like I make white boy jokes a lot. Wait, just so here making sitting... black girl, black girl, white girl jokes doesn't have much to do with her race. No, my perception of her, my feelings towards her weren't, weren't really like that much a product of her race at all. Um, I don't think my feelings towards her would have changed no matter her race, but because of the type of person that she was and I was, we would make constant racial jokes, but it wasn't like the bedrock of our relationship or anything. It was just, we were both like edgy high schoolers in an interracial relationship. Um, but th that didn't like, it, it wasn't like, it, it wasn't like what we thought about. Like it was, it was, I wasn't thinking like, I like this person because she's black or whatever. Um, it was it was just like a thing that came up, you know. I mean, I t I make like edgy racial jokes on my stream alone, sitting here in a room as a white boy, pretty often too. It's clearly a part of my like um, broader dialect. Think of like um ooh, here's an example. Think of trans relationships, okay? Um, if you like the edgy trans people on Twitter are constantly making self-deprecating jokes about being trans, partly to assuage their insecurity and show people they're not like they're 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 not stuck up and they're actually cool, and partly because they're very funny. And like, if you have a relationship with any of those people, they're gonna make constant like cis transgender jokes or whatever. But I don't think that makes their like mutual love any less real. You know, it would just it would just mean that it, a, a sort of a, a sociological 
cultural acknowledgement of these demographic elements is just a part of their vernacular. It just comes up, but it doesn't, it doesn't like sup it, do it doesn't like degrade the love or feelings they have for each other. Right. Well, I don't think those, I don't, I don't think those two things are the same. Like someone making self-deprecating jokes about themselves is not the same as someone saying, oh my God, I, I have a predilection for trans girls. I, I only date trans girls. I trans girls. I love the fact that she's trans like that, that, that to me I guess it's just I guess it's showing my biases here because I I don't like like I've I've been hit on by by white girls right who made it a point to note that I'm racially ambiguous I've been hit on by black girls who said that I'm racially ambiguous I don't understand why anyone would find that endearing in any shape or form to be like oh I'm attracted to you because you have a mix of black and white features what if they find and it I can't attractive? tell <laughs> but that's what I'm saying it's like okay find me attractive because you like, you know, the way I, the, 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 the facial symmetry or my height or my personality. Why not physical Why characteristics race? associated? Well, cause, cause race describes physical characteristics for the most part. Um, they, they're just sort of lumping together a collection of physical attributes that are associated with your mixed race status. They might also like the cultural implication because they might think of a mixed race person as being, uh, for lack of a better term, like in two worlds, you know, where you 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 have like experience with uh, black culture, so they can like talk AAVE around you without getting like dumb eye looks. <laughs> um, but you know, you're you're you also have like a white parent, so maybe there's like other stuff that you're more familiar with. You know, walking two worlds, as it were. Um, there, like I don't know, like you 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 may think that's an insincere reason to like a person, but I could totally see a person thinking like you know. Uh, I've had some bad relationship experiences, but you know what I could really go for? A handsome, swarthy guy um, who I can talk AAVE around, but um, who also, like, uh, it, you know, uh, I don't know, fucking shares my love for 19th century literature. I don't fucking know. Like, you know, there there are reasons. And, and people can be a little petty sometimes when it comes to, like, what types of people they're into. But I think once you actually get in the relationships, we're all equally capable of love. Sure, 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 sure. I mean, after after a while, you might find something else to like about a person. But for 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 whatever reason, uh, people that I've been in communication with, it it comes up way too often among people who have been like married for a long time. And it's like, okay, do you have anything else to talk about? I get it. He's black. That's cool. And you're white. That's fantastic. What what else is it that you have in your relationship? Why why is this important? Why is his skin color? Why is her skin color important? And for, for whatever reason, this sort of racial bias, you know, is accepted because it's not preventing someone from getting a job, or it's it. I don't understand how people can say we want to live in a post race world where you know race is a social construct, yada yada yada. But yet, even in left circles. It's such a big deal. It's like, well, if you, it's like what Morgan Freeman said, like, if you want race to stop being a big deal, stop talking about it. You know, it's like, I can't, I don't, I don't understand. I don't believe that at all. I don't think that we should stop talking about it. So, okay. So if we continue to make a big deal about our differences, there's always going to be a lot of, but, <laughs> a but, lot of schism between but, the, between people because we think we're all different. You keep inferring though, um, talking about race or making jokes about race, or bringing up race, isn't the same thing as reinforcing the idea that we're all different. Making petty jokes um, about your own or other's races can be a way of establishing that we're pretty similar, for example. So a lot of the white boy, black girl jokes that I had with my then partner, the underlying joke was basically that we were making fun of the idea that society would ascribe so much weight to the perceived differences between us. You know? Like, um... Like, uh, like, uh, oh, of, of, of course you knew that thing or you could do that thing. It's because of your inherent biological predisposition towards X or Y, white boy, you know, and the thing in reference is like the way in which I opened a can of tuna. That's, like, that, that's not the, exactly what I'm talking. So, so like, so, making well, a well, joke. That's like a, that's like a joking element. Sure. But, but, but like, a, sometimes but I would joke, like not, but not, sometimes I'm not I would talking stop. about. That, but sometimes I would smack her ass and say big black booty. Like, uh, but, but like there's, there's a wide variety, but these things aren't really about reinforcing differences. It's just the vernacular of like racial awareness is something that we both possessed. So it, it, as a product, it shows up in the way we talk to each making, other. Making edgy, that's not what I'm making edgy jokes, like making a 9-11 joke, you know, saying, oh, 9-11 jokes usually fall flat. 
you know, I'm not making fun of the, I'm not going to like the memorial and then laughing at the jumpers who, you know, careened out of the buildings. It's that those are two different things making an edgy. So if you're making an edgy joke, which is a sort of meta means of poking fun at the very idea that the differences matter is fine. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who revel in the differences and a lot not you, I mean, clearly, from what you've told me, not you, but a lot of these uh, people in interracial relationships and a lot of people who want to be in interracial relationships and, like, come to me as a mixed person, like, as if to ask me permission if it's okay to get into an interracial relationship are all not, they're not making fun of the differences. They're not saying, hey, these differences are really pointless and I should be able to date whoever I like. It's these differences are really important to me and it's really important that this person be different. But isn't there a, like an element of perceptive bias here as well? Like if I ended up marrying that black girl and we had kids or whatever, and like I was in the kitchen making food with them and I smacked her ass and said big black booty or whatever. And then like my kid grew up to be like an embittered mixed race child who was like, yeah, my father only liked my mother because she was black. You know, like I, I, I like he like that fucking kid doesn't know what's going on in my head. Right. Like, I, like, I don't know. Like. We're, kind, we're, we're relying on what might be the most unreliable testimony here, which is a child's perception of their parents. Um, I, I, if, look, people make a bigger deal about race than I, than I think we should, and I agree that there is a lot of casual racism that goes on in interracial relationships, and a kind of like, similar to the whole like, men have this responsibility, women have this responsibility kind of thing. Like the, the, the paternalizing, oh, we all have our roles type of racism. Um, but I don't think that even that, even in its worst form, I don't think that detracts from the love in a relationship. I like, I, I guess when I, when I think of like the capacity to genuinely like someone, I don't think that there's necessarily a, 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 a compromise between how much you care for somebody and to what extent you, um, you place value on racial differences, you know? I may take issue with the way in which they approach like the racial differences thing, but I don't think that compromises the sincere affection. And I think that bad attitude towards racial differences is also present in monoracial couples. I don't think it's exclusive to this. So I think the issues we're talking about are something that are universal. Just people with weird attitudes towards race will pass them down and make an issue of it, you know? Um, and I, I don't think any of that sort of weighs on the love. Well, I, I, this, yeah, of course, this is a very difficult topic because it's all about, you know, like it, it, there's no, there's no hard study on it, you know? So it's, it's everyone, like I said, in the beginning is like, it's a master of their own experience. And so everyone's saying, well, I've, you know, never seen this. So therefore it can't be. And then other person is saying, well, I have seen it like all the time. And so it must be, um, of course, there's a lot of inferences, right? Um, but when people say certain things enough you can make that inference in the same way that if you watch like i don't know a geeks and gamers you you know they're racist you know they just don't like black people in movies and video games not because they've explicitly said that they have never explicitly said we don't want black people in video games and movies but through the things that they've said throughout the course of their content you can go you can infer that the problem that they have with a lot of these games and movies is there the race of the characters? That's I, that's the common denominator. I don't think so there's you, anything they could do or say outside of some very direct and on the nose stuff that would justify inferring that they love each other less because they're only interested in each other as racial archetypes. I I just find that very alien. I full disclosure, I have um uh, body dys dysphoria or dysmorphia, whichever one it is, um, <laughs> uh, BDD. Uh, I I don't see myself as my body. Uh, I'm a I, I don't I'm not a religious person. I don't believe in a soul or anything. But like I'm a the a ghost in the wrong shell. Uh, so I for me it 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 is intensely awkward to hear people like make such a big deal about a people's race because I'm like that's not who that person is. The person is not their race. You know I'm not my race. I'm I'm who I am. And so it just becomes very strange. And I, I get that. It's just you have to understand who you are in the sense that you're referring to refers only to you. 
every other person you will ever interact with constructs a different version of you that they interact with exclusively. Your thoughts are contained entirely within your own mind. There's nothing that... Well, any... of course, of course. I mean, right, so, I, I, so, to, so I... to, to other people, you are your race. Your, your height, your race, your skin color, your tone of and, voice, and that's, everything and that's you what say I mean. and do. I, I've, always, I've always felt that the whole point of this movement, I've kind of become disillusioned with it, within the left was to get past that state. Like when people are saying like, hey, you know, race is a social construct. Well, if it's a social construct, it can be torn down. But the way to tear it down is not to say, hey, look, let's, let us, let us hyper fixate on our differences. Well, that's I, not gonna tear down the social construct. I'm not politically advocating for people to hyper fixate on race when it comes to dating. I'm only saying it doesn't detract from the love they feel for each other. But realistically, right now, even if we got rid of race as a political construct, black people would still have darker skin, wider nose on average, thicker lips, different hair, uh, yeah, and no, people would still it. and people would still find those characteristics attractive. Um, to to those people, they may not have the term race, but they would still see people as what they are. And what we are, unfortunately, is a collection of physical attributes containing a collection of behaviors and personality characteristics. But I don't think there's anything wrong with liking any of those things, really. Um, I think there are more and less problematic ways of doing it. Uh, you know, and certainly there are issues to be addressed and introspection you know, it, it, to be taken. But I don't, I don't, you know, I, I think, I, I guess I just think it's fine, you know? People are always going to have superficial and arbitrary aesthetic preferences, uh, at the very least, which, um, you know, they can, they can choose to make a big deal or not. But even if they do, I don't think that means they love each other any less. I, I guess I just I, I argue that if someone is going to make a relationship based purely on or at least their first principles, their fundamental axiom, their uh, fundamental axioms, as uh, Jordan Lee, Jordan B. B. P. Peterson would say, um, their their fundamental axioms are going to be the person's race. Then, yeah, the, there isn't any real genuine, genuine love in that relationship. If you're going to say that there is a racial archetype, which to me is just insane. There is no such thing as a racial archetype. A, and we're not characters in a RPG where you go, oh, this is the berserker and this is the, yeah. no, that's not how that works. We're not, we're not characters in a Tolkien novel. There is no archetype to a race. Hobbits aren't good thieves. It just so happens that that one hobbit was a good thief. Um, it, but it's just, you're, you're conflating stuff again. I'm not making prescriptive claims about what every member of a race is, but at the very, like, at the simplest point, like, a race, you know, does refer broadly to a collection of physical characteristics, and if we're referring to that, then those things are always going to be perceptible. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with pointing that out, right? Like, you, I know that you have arbitrary physical preferences in other people. Everybody does. Um, even if they're not sexual ones, even if it's just like, well, I find these types of people more trusting or this this type of eye or this look or this vibe is something that I find more appreciable. Everyone has those things. I, I mean, there's an element of unfairness there, but I don't necessarily think that an interest, even if it's an open and expressed one in those things, means that there's any less real interest, right? It's just, you know, people people like what they like. I I don't know. I I, I don't typically look at a person and then make any kind of you know, this sounds so stereotypical. Oh, I don't judge anyone, but I, I, I have to have a conversation with a person before I can actually understand: Do I like this person or not? Up until that point, the, I, 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 I'm kind of a misanthrope. I don't like anyone until I have a conversation with someone and then determine that I like them. Uh, so, if it, it, regardless of their race, their ethnicity, their height, their weight, their whatever, it's like they're all exactly the same. They're they are they are they are barely civilized apes with baseball caps and automatic weapons, as George Carlin said. Um, so I, I I get maybe I'm just coming at this as a person who is alien in this sphere. I do not understand how anyone can claim to actually love an individual when they love that individual's race. That that's not an aspect of who they are. Like I I it is personally though. like. As much like, as a I, tall person's be height is a part of what they are, it's 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 absolutely a part of their experiences. The thing is, you don't know what those experiences are. Like you know, people, you can't 
say, hey, look, you know, because this person's black, this is their life experience. It goes back to that whole like like the representation thing, like, oh, well, you know, we need to have more black people in movies because that way black people have someone to identify with. It's like, well, no, I, I've identified with white characters all the time. I don't have a problem with, <laughs> you know, so it's like, again, that's another means of boiling people down to like their skin color. It's like, oh, hey, here's a black character. Now you can identify with them. It's like I've, I identified with the white character because they had a similar life experience in their in that story. So the, me. Prob it, the problem is, and I think you do just fundamentally differ from a lot of people here. The reason why representation for black people is important is because we do all see the race of these characters. And when the only characters you see achieving protagonist shit in movies and TV are white, you send an implicit message that it is the role of those people to do that sort of thing. Much in the same way that representation of women in fields has often been influenced by the prominence of women in those fields on television. If you have, for example, that is such know, a that is such a weak thing, though. Like no, you, it's you not, have wait, wait, it's 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 sociologically provable to an incredibly strong degree. It's called the uh, the Scully effect, I believe. Um, oh, it's Scully, like, like X Files. <laughs> yes, because having a female detective on the show showed a lot of young girls that actually that was something they could do. And then they went up and they joined up with the police and became detectives and forensic investigators. You, seriously, that that's a uh, that's incredible. Uh, yeah, I, I'll definitely go look into the Scully because I, I that that's a that is actually a a that is a uh, a epiphany I guess for me because, like I said, I I don't understand that. I really do not understand this identifying with people who have a similar skin tone it, to you. That is, it's not just identifying with them; it's understanding that culture has a place for them. So, for example, when it comes to media characters, I don't identify more with men or with women. I think they're both perfectly fine characters to identify with in a narrative sense. But when you take a look at movies in the 1980s, do you see any male uh, air stewards? People walking between the aisles to serve others, give drinks and stuff? No, you won't. You won't find them anywhere. They're not present. They're still barely present, uh, you know, proportionally in the, um, in the industry. And the reason for that isn't because men can't do the job. The reason for that is because everyone just thought of it as a woman's job. And culture reaffirmed that idea by exclusively showing women in that position. If you grow up in a society that is notably white supremacist to begin with, and then when you look on TV and everyone doing the cool stuff is white, it's not difficult to internalize the message that that is stuff that is relegated to white people, and that as a black person, you're left to other things. You know, when do you see, think of, think of like the 80s or whatever, when do you see black people on TV outside of a couple of action movies, right? Um, uh, news reports on shootings in downtown, you know, that kind of stuff has an effect on people, and we do internalize that messaging. I, I, I suppose I, 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 like, I don't know really how to, if people really do, I, I don't know how to, how to, how to really respond to that because I, I've never felt that way. I've always felt like if, if a character, I identify with a character that I, I identify with as a person. But like, it's, not, it's like, it's not about identifying with them. It's about what culture is telling you you're allowed to do based on your race. Well, again, I think that's, that's a fairly, and again, I think that this all ties together with because we're so harping on race, we're making ourselves weaker. Like when I grew up watching like, uh, you know, you know, science fiction movies or watching, you know, Marvel movies like, you know, I've, the, the, the Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, I identified with that. I thought that was fantastic. It was inspiring. It was inspirational, all that stuff to be a hero. And that's, you know, sort of, you know, what I wanted. You know, my heroes were like Steven Spielberg and George Lucas and whatnot. It, they're white. Who cares that they're white? Like okay. to me, I didn't even it's, recognize that. So, so not, what I'm saying is, but 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 okay, you like science fiction. Think of the night. Okay, okay. Imagine you're born in early 1950s and you're a black kid in America. Um, you grow up literally in an apartheid state, separate but equal. Jim Crow laws, blah blah blah. Civil rights movement. You see it all happen. Dr. Martin Luther King fights and dies. Uh, Civil Rights Act is passed. You know, and Star Trek is on the television. The original with. James T. Kirk, you know, um, and they have Lieutenant Uhura on the deck of the Enterprise, you know, uh, to have a black woman on TV, a black woman who, by the way, uh, 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 was written to by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., saying that her yes, role- Yes, I'm aware of that. I'm aware yeah, of that. of pivotal importance. And why? Not because nobody could have, um, nobody could have- um, uh, uh, related to, no black kid could have related to a white science officer or communications officer, I think, um, 
on the Starship Enterprise, but rather because in a time where the future of black people in this country was uncertain, where that you were literally just coming out of second class like citizenship, the idea that you could be not only on a mainstream television production, but you could be showcased alongside white people as harbingers of humanity's future in a science fiction show. It's not about whether you can identify with her. It's about whether or not her presence there as a black woman says anything about the state of the future and the present in a racial sense. And I don't think well, acknowledging that like diminishes or weakens anybody. That's the reason I, I why white it, people got so mad when she kissed Kirk. Yeah, well, I think I think it, I think it does actually. I think it does weaken people. I'm not saying, of course, I'm not making a call for like, oh, let's just have no black people in movies. No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> it, what I'm saying is characters and archetypes because that's what we're talking about we're talking about mythology you know in the jordan peterson sense the 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 characters in mythology are identifiable are relatable are some inspirational because what you're talking about here is really inspiration you're talking about watching a person do something and going oh i can do that too or i can be like that too growing up as a as a half black person therefore in america's eyes a black person Watching guys like Ray Harryhausen do stop motion animation uh, for like the Jason and the Argonauts movies and like the Clash of the Titans, the original one from the 80s. I, 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 my parents were into like old movies and stuff, so that's the stuff that I like. Seeing him, this old white guy animating this stuff, made me want to be a stop motion animator. It had nothing, I, there was nothing telling me by him being, by virtue of him being a white person, that, oh, I can't do this because there's not another black, I can't name a single black stop motion animator. I'm sure there are some, but I can't name a single one. But okay. Harry Housen and Tim Burton and those guys. So I, what I'm saying is if we continue to harp on race as we do with interracial relationships by even calling them interracial, there's no race. I mean, it's just two humans if fucking. You, okay, if you – okay, do you think there might be an implicit message in a country that's 50 percent white having a media sphere that – only has white actors do you think there might be something like a message that's being expressed there or like an attitude that's being conveyed through that there can be but not explicit but but not 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 necessarily no. no i would say necessarily we're a nation of hundreds of millions of people to have a media sphere the television shows and movies and everything that people grow up on that inform us about the world that shape our biases and perceptions for them to exclusively contain white people in a country which is only 50% white, sends a very explicit message about who this country is for. This country might contain non-white people, but it is not for non-white people. That is the message that is being expressed, you know? Uh, when, the, when the female uh, air stewardesses, you know, um, it may be a job that men can do, but it is a job for women. Technically, anyone can be a police officer, but if you were to look at movies and television shows, you especially be. older ones, right, right. But it is a job <laughs> for men. And all of these things are conveyed implicitly through the representation that you see. Um, you know, there's a reason why people got mad when Uhura kissed Kirk. If you cede this territory, if you feign this liberal race neutrality, what you really, the, 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 the idea you're oh, really no, putting Oh, no, I'm not forward, talking about anything liberal here. Who's, who's, who's the liberal? Get him out of here. Um. <laughs> well, your attitude on this is explicitly liberal. The idea that by not talking about race, this isn't just liberal, it's a conservative perspective. It's what Morgan Freeman... Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, no, wait, 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 wait. But it is, though. Because that's the common attitude they have, and you're kind of serving their interests. Conservatives can say, we should all just stop talking about race. And what they mean by that is, like, stop trying to address racism. Like, No, by... that's not what I mean at all. That's, what I mean is stop, talk, stop making people's race the primary or even an important aspect of who and what they are it is that, an that, important aspect of who and what but they only are. because we say it has to be because yeah, it's a, as we as we know it is a social con it's not scientific so is so you know, is gender or so coming in coming so, into sort of my field here the, the sciences i i know that there is no such thing as race i i and agree so with you but so is gender and gender is a commonly expressed can you imagine if we thought relationships where people referred to the genders of their partners frequently? Can we imagine if we thought of that as non-loving? You know, you don't love your girlfriend. You only love that she's a woman. Well, they're kind of related, right? To, to like a straight guy. Um, 
like gender is also a social construct, but obviously being a man or a being woman. Being attracted, is... being attracted to a woman as a heterosexual, or being attracted to a, a person yeah, of your same gender as a homosexual, is not the same as being attracted to a black woman because she's the black. The only it's not, difference is that we've the given same thing. the only difference is that we've given a term to that kind of like preferentiality. You know, um, people's attitudes. Oh, so, so what you're saying is that that, that, that that there's a that, that we did enough research, we'd find some kind of biological reason why. Uh, a white guy is attracted to a black woman. Come on, that, wait, that, first, that, wait, first of, on. you don't believe that. Wait, first of all, you you could um, because of the way tribalism interacts with our perceptions. Um, and second of all, I don't even know if we have a biological explanation for why heterosexuality exists. In fact, to my knowledge, I don't think we've ever once because we don't have a gay gene. I don't think we have a straight gene either. I don't think we have any determinative biological understanding of that. Well, it's it, particular... it goes. I mean, as I'm not in the field of biology, but from what I understand of evolution, it would be because our genes want to reproduce, right? So we obviously no, I, I would under, I have understand to be heterosexual that. in order to do that, right? But so but yeah, but you don't knowing, have to have sex with a black woman in order to reproduce. Okay, wait, wait, wait. But knowing <laughs> why evolutionarily we would have that bias is not the same as being able to identify the characteristics in us that make us that way. And I don't believe we have. So we know I believe that the the bias the bias towards people wanting to to date or marry outside of their race or have kids outside of their race it is not biological. It no, is so wait, social. hold on. Wait, we're so wait, we're we're sort of running away from this. Let me just try to be a little bit more direct, okay? Your belief that oh they don't like a person for who they are, they like their race, to me sounds like oh he doesn't like his girlfriend, he just likes the fact that they're a woman. These are comparable attributes in the sense that there's something they appreciate about a person that they talk about a lot um, that you're you're sort of using as an ex like a, an explanation for how they don't actually care about them. Like they just like the archetype. The funny thing is the idea of a guy who doesn't even like his partners. He just likes the fact that they're woman is a real thing. That's a real actual thing that happens. We all know them. Guys who don't really love their partners, but just sort of like having a woman. That's an actual right, and thing. That, that and, that's, and, that's what, and that's what I'm referring to. And that happens a lot with okay, race. <laughs> okay, well, I don't see that happening. I, I, like, I know this is all coming down to personal bias and perception, but with respect, a lot of this just seems like you... I mean, I'll just, I'll just be frank, okay? Your early experiences with race have caused you to be contemptuous of people who refer to it, like, conceptually. Um, and as a product, you have distanced yourself from it so severely that now, whenever people make reference to race in uh, the context of a relationship, it, it's, its importance is exacerbated to you. You project what it did to you and what you think of it onto their thoughts, so when they talk about it, or they make decisions based on it, or seem to make decisions based on it, you see in them the importance that you must associate with something you consider that arbitrary. You think because it is so arbitrary, because it is so temporal and meaningless to a character, um, that for them to fixate on it so much, they must be massively incensed by it, very invested. But in reality, race is a part of what people are. Gender is a part of what people are. And that they are social constructs doesn't take away from that. Um, you know. I agree there are a lot of issues with race when it comes to the partners people choose and how they, you know, treat them and attitude and all that and what have you. But I don't think that's an interracial or monoracial thing. I just think that's sort of the attitudes that we have towards race. If anything, the studies that we have seem to indicate that interracial relationships, which are often a product of um, racial proximity, um, tend to have it produce better attitudes on race on average. Um, so I, I don't think interracial relationships should be seen as some like solution to racism or whatever i just don't i just I, I frankly i just think that your attitude that they sort of come at the expense of love for another partner uh is a product of projection or at least like your personal attitude towards the issue because i will agree that the interracial relationship stuff probably like you know there it's like an interesting dynamic there that comes up a lot but i have no idea where you could get the like lack of love from I guess, I guess the the lack of love love comes from the attachment to the person's race. That that that's just to me that just doesn't seem like love. I but mean, that you're, you're, right that's yeah. it right there. That's it. That's exactly what I'm referring to. Personal attachment. I've been attached to the fact that my partners in the past are girls. I'm not even straight. I I don't even care that much. But when I'm with girls, I like the girl, and when I'm with guys, I like the guy, and I like that in them. I've been with people of different races. 
And uh, when I'm, I've been with a black girl, made, made a lot of comments about her being black, um, which were mutual, of course. Uh, she also made plenty of comments about me being black. I've been with Hispanic people, made plenty of comments about them being Hispanic. You know, made white, co white comments, white people. It, it, just because it comes up a lot doesn't necessarily mean that it's that important. It doesn't have in many people's minds the same, like, domineering presence, I think. Um, you know? I think in your mind, you think of it as like, like if people kept bringing up skull shapes. Because skull shapes are kind of like an antiquated racial association that today only very racist people care about. So you're like hearing people in your life like, oh, well, I love the fact that my wife has like an, uh, you know, an asymmetri asymmetrical skull with like a left bump or whatever. And in your mind, you're thinking like, what the fuck are these people on about? But we haven't moved to a point where like being attached to or fixated on race is socially atypical enough for it to really necessitate like a degree of of pathological obsession you know at this point i think it's pretty common well that that and that's what i that's the point that i want to get to i want to get to the point where no one people don't if people didn't care about it they wouldn't bring it up so much um and what frustrates me as a mixed person is that it is brought up entirely too much to a point where we're never going to be able to get past these issues that we're experiencing in our in our world and particularly in the United States uh, concerning race. We will never get past them because everyone wants to boil for all that phrase I've been using, boil people down to the racial archetypes. I don't think they're and doing there, that. There are no racial archetypes. That's the no. first thing we need to get. There are no but racial I archetypes. I don't think people are doing that. People engage in stereotype selection while choosing partners, but when they're actually right, exactly, and stereotype well, selection oh, is everyone, bad. Like if I was, uh, if I was, if I was looking to hire somebody at a business, and a black guy came in with dreadlocks, and I decided I'm not going to hire this person because he's wearing dreadlocks, that's bad. Like yeah, that is a bad thing. That's because as but, an employer, I, you're in a position I'm, of power over them, and there's an economic need for equity at that point. When it comes for to most the partners, for most people, there is a need for intimate relationships. For no, most no, people, not but, for no, everybody. But that's that's not a power dynamic, though. We're equals in the sexual marketplace in terms of our respective rights and entitlements, and we all engage in stereotyping when we do this. Whether it's how people talk or what interests they have, what they look like, we all uh, engage in stereotype bias when we're choosing people to spend our time with. And eventually, you develop a more deeper, like a more nuanced, appreciative you know, care for a person, but everyone and, engages and in my, this. And what I advocate for is to take that stereotype bias and, and, and democratize it, equalize it. So the way I view people is I, I, I don't care. I don't think about their race. I, I, it doesn't even, that, that's why it boggles my brain when people ask me like, Oh, Hey, what are you? It's like, what do you mean? What the hell? I, I'm a, a human being, I suppose. The, uh, difference when i see a person respect, i see a person this would be like if you were um a gender and somebody asked you your pronouns and you were like what i i don't understand why like because you don't uh, you don't give much weight to this characteristic and that's fine but like you you live in a world where people do and you're well, making well, yourself in the, the same but but in your the same world way isn't that's the how change happens we see that there is that there is because my i've i've made friends with your world isn't the better so many one people, here. right? I'm not saying I'm not. No, 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 no. I have been able to form good, solid relationships, communications with a lot of different people. People who you know are you know right wing MAGA chuds or who are left wing or whatever, black, white, Asian, all of that. Because I look at them as blank slates first, okay. and that's the bias that people should be working on developing. Nobody's... That's what I mean by introspection. So no. So that wait no 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 please, race is part of who people are. If you wanted I to look, I, no no no, but you're, no, no you're you're wrong though. It, it you can disagree if you want to. Race is a part of what people are. It shapes on aggregate our experiences. But what does that even mean? Social... What does that even mean? I'm explaining. What does that even mean? I'm explaining. It shapes on average our experiences, not every individual person to person, but broadly. Um, it shapes our physical appearance. It shapes so society's perception of us. These things massively influence what people but turn out to be. What no, stop! Wait, wait, us. please, wait, stop. This is the case for everything: class, gender, sex, nationality, religion, ethnicity. 
you have a bugbear with race, okay? You're not engaging in a rational deconstruction of a concept. Frankly, I think this subject just triggers you. Because if you were to apply this logic to every other, um, like, a social demographic that people have arbitrary biases towards or engage in stereotype bias towards, we would no longer be able to make any, like, we would be blind and ignorant to sociological bias. You can wander into true. a social situation and think, ah, here's a group of black people and here's a group of white people. They are both of equal experience until proven otherwise with no differences, and I will treat both of them exactly the same. But that would make you an alien and social. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with treating people exactly the same? I thought that was like the whole point. Like because the conduct of their character, not the color of their skin. Like that was the whole thing. That, that's when it comes to moral assessment and how you treat people. But when you perceive and interact with people, you're making inferences based on what you see. So for example, I wouldn't speak in the same language to a person wearing a suit at an office party as I would to a homeless person. Because a homeless person, by virtue of the circumstances of their situation, is probably going through a different set of circumstances. I could have a conversation with a person at a party about something like, um, I don't know, how my business is doing. But I wouldn't have that conversation while talking with a homeless person. This is motivated entirely by the stereotypes that I've associated with homeless people versus the kind of people that I would meet at an office party. And I think those are valid stereotypes. Stereotyping is not inherently a bad thing. It's a necessary thing that we do socially in order to make quick snap decisions about how we should treat people in different circumstances. The way we treat men and women differs. The way we treat people of different racial groups differ. But if you're aware and conscious and like, um, I don't know, woke or whatever, these biases, these stereotypes, these predilections, they can be good things because they can inform you uh, how not to engage in microaggressions, for example. Um, you might be more wary on certain subjects around different groups than others. Uh, jokes that I might make, like, that are kind of edgy in some company, I might not make in others, you know? This is just a basic part of socializing with people. I don't think that means we should go up to black people and treat them like a different species or whatever, but an awareness that, like, being black has shaped who they are, I think that's a pretty, like, normal, basic thing to start with, I guess, you know, when, when it comes to but, like, what I mean is like, how does that help you interact with a human being? It's like, okay, so black, being, being black has shaped who they are. Okay. What, what does that mean? I mean, what is, what does that do? Like, how can you, I mean, are you going to do with, with a group of white people? Would you just go around saying the N word because there are no black people around? I mean, I just, that no, doesn't I only make say the N word around black people. Um, it wouldn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really affect. Well, I'm always much. around a black person. So it doesn't really affect <laughs> that much about like my direct behavior with them or anything. It's more like how I perceive our interactions. So have you never like had a conversation with, okay, you've been around more black people than I have because I grew up in fucking Beverly Hills, okay? But when I hear about like um, people's life- I grew life up in Front Royal, Virginia, not much black people there either. Okay, well, here's, here's an example then, okay? During one of the first jobs that I had, when I worked at a frozen yogurt place, there was a coworker who I liked very much. He was black. At the time, I was not particularly socially, I was not very socially integrated. I was not very sociologically aware. My coworker was black, and he commuted to the job all the way from downtown Los Angeles, which if anyone has been to Los Angeles, you'll know that there are plenty of black people there, and also they have plenty of reasons to complain about downtown Los Angeles. I was having a conversation with him, and he shared with me the fact that he owned an unlicensed firearm. At the time, I lived in Beverly Hills. The idea of owning an unlicensed firearm sounded ridiculous to me. If there were any crimes in your area, you call the police. If there's a threat to you, you call the police. They're right there, they'll show up in no time at all, and frankly, the idea of needing to own a gun for any reason sounded kind of ridiculous because there were so few crimes in Beverly Hills that the, like, the idea of needing a gun to defend you is just ridiculous, you know? So I like gave living him in Canada, right? Huh? Like living in Canada, right? Like living in Canada. <laughs> so I gave him shit for it. I asked him, somewhat accusatorily, as one might a person who uh, has, has, you know, to, to someone who's admitted they, like, littered or something, like, well, why'd you do that, you know? Obviously... Now, I wouldn't do that, because now that I'm a little bit more socially aware, I can think, I can stereotype, lives in downtown LA, is black. Why might this person need an unlicensed firearm? And because I now can think about that in ways that I couldn't before, a way in which my previous naive, a racial thinking uh, has, has been eroded over time, I've actually grown less racist, because it was racist of me in my opinion at least, to 
arrogantly project my preconceptions as to what life experiences a person might have onto him without thinking what his life experiences might have done to shape what he needs. I see what you're saying, but I wouldn't have taken when you said like, okay, he lives in downtown LA. So if I hear that someone's from a bad part of town, that's a stereotype. There are parts of downtown Los Angeles that are well to do. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not that familiar with the West Coast of the United States. So let's say the, the area I live in, there is a an area which is pretty bad, right? So if someone said they were from that area and they owned a unlicensed firearm, I would put the two and two together of they live in a bad part of town where someone might try to hurt them or take not, their stuff. This is wait, this so, is already so, already wait, this is already stereotyping. I have I, to hold I understand you to that. Your standards. I, under, I understand. I understand that, but it is not racial stereotyping. I wouldn't have said he's black and lives in a bad side. His, him being black doesn't change anything about him being in it a bad part of town. absolutely does. Black people don't call the cops when they're threatened by others. White people do. A white person that, living in a bad part of town can call the <laughs> cops and rely on them much more than a black person can. Why are you laughing? That's true. That's a part of the, the equation. The, the, reason, the, reason, the reason why I'm laughing is because I literally, I literally had a conversation today with a coworker about this. They, they're, they are very white. They wouldn't call the police either for the I'm, same okay. exact reason. Your, your so anecdotal I, experiences don't. I know my anecdotal broader... experiences don't change what? the world. I'm, okay. I'm just chuckling. You asked why I was laughing. That's why I was laughing. Okay. It's, it's just I found that ironic. But what I'm saying it's is part of the what... it's part of the stereotyping. But in this case, the stereotyping helps inform my behavior, my neutral behavior, which would have been admonishment because it is a bad idea to own an unlicensed firearm. You can of go to course, jail for that. Of course, of right. course. Uh, it, is, it is a federal crime, right? Right. So. My race-neutral attitude was the wrong one. My racially biased one was the correct one. Well, what I'm, what I'm saying is that I, I just, I don't get why you would have taken the... Uh, I really am, like, drawing a blank on, like, the idea of, okay, you listen to Bad Bar Down and it's black. It's like... I can just read, oh, he lives in a bad part of town. Of course he's going to have a gun. That's also stereotyping. You see, you, this is what I mean when I say you have a particular bugbear Yeah, but it's not, I'm, I'm talking about race. racial stereotyping. No, but that's, it's that's like, the thing. If you, you look, you can't stereotyping, have a... I, I get that stereotyping has a advantage because evolutionarily, all of our ape ancestors that assumed that every snake was venomous, they survived. You can't the take an issue with stereotyping so, for a person's demographic characteristics only based on race. The, the, the logic behind SNAP stereotyping is the same in all cases. The only question is, how do you determine what used? kind of stereotyping is good and racial stereotyping is good or bad? How do you determine if this racial stereotype is good, this racial stereotype bad? You know, you, how do you determine that? You need a degree in sociology to answer that one, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, the real, the real answer is that it's not about, it's, 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 it's nuanced. It's complicated. Like, this we're talking about like the like the racial dynamics of socialization like this is an incredibly complicated subject most people i'm going to be honest with you most people pick it up intuitively which is why most people don't have to go to school for it you can get book learning on it and i have um and i mean there's a, a whole range of potential like ethical and sociological threads of analysis that you can go down but broadly speaking i think the argument is like if your understanding of racial stereotypes can help you arrive at an outcome which is morally good that is to say that leads to good outcomes like um furthers understanding or minimizes harm that's a good thing but if the racial stereotyping that you're engaging in doesn't do that then that can be quite bad um, I am a, you know, overwhelmingly racial stereotyping has been a negative, but the concept of quick stereotyping based on characteristics is an intrinsic part of human behavior. And as long as it exists, an understanding of how to employ it, like, uh, effectively and helpfully, that's really important. So use good stereotyping. Yes. But not... But, but, but... <laughs> I like, don't know. Yeah, I, like I, use good law, not bad law. Say good well, words, yes, not yes, bad yes. words. Yeah, like yes. Well, no, okay, well, sh sure. But I just, to me, it just seems a leap to say, okay, well, I have to, I have to judge this person in, at least in some way, um, based on their on their race. That just seems just that just seems antithetical to. Uh, it's not. It's not about judging. It's about because judging implies like moral weight. It's about expectation. It's about... Well, you, it, it is about... In the example you gave, you gave an example of a guy who, by, you know, in this story, I don't know if it's a real story or not, but the, the story is story. he committed a crime. He committed, committed a crime by owning an unlicensed firearm. And basically you're saying that he's... Just, you're judging, but a moral judgment that he is justified in doing that because he's a black guy in a bad neighborhood. And 
uh, that that's a judgment. So you're no, saying that you got to use racial stereotypes no, to judge people. The point isn't the judgment. The point is the information that I had prior. If I wasn't blinded by race neutral ideology, I would have recognized that his different life circumstances, ones that I could have stereotyped off of him because of his race um, and because of the place that he lived in. Um, would have changed the circumstances and made what he did morally justifiable. But it's not about the justification. It's about the information I have coming into it. We all engage in behavior like this, right? Like, it's the same reason why um, women, when they're out, like, walking at night, might feel threatened if there's a huge dude walking behind them, like, keeping pace. But if there's another chick who's just walking with, like, earbuds in or whatever, they might not care at all, you know? That is a product of literal stereotyping, but it's also one that saves women's lives. Um, right, exactly. But 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 the the kind of stereotyping you're talking about here is not going to save anyone's life, and it's not going to harm anyone if we don't do it. It does harm people. First of all, earlier you were you were making arguments about the lack of necessity for um, inclusivity along racial lines in media, which strikes me as particularly harmful if implemented. But even if we're just go like specifically, no, no, I didn't. There's nothing to implement. I'm I, because because I'm not making a prescriptive statement saying we should stop having black characters. That's not what I'm saying at all. You're saying what we I'm should saying not I... care, and if you don't care, it doesn't happen. Good things don't happen because nobody cares. You know who does care? White supremacists. We have to care twice as much to get everything that we want done. You're never going to see all these racial problems amended because everyone forgets about it. They'll never forget. They'll keep fighting day in and day out to make sure that I have rights and you don't. It's only because we continue to care and to bring attention to these issues that we're capable of even keeping pace with them. It is only through interminable effort that we're capable of even maintaining a positive status quo. And within that status quo, you know, there is still room for stereotyping because it is a necessity. Um, it is how we work, but there are responsible ways to employ it. Um, and frankly, like, I don't, I don't want to get into the specifics on this in large part because I feel like a lot of them are sort of intuitively appreciable, but like, yeah. If you go out in the dating market and you're looking for like a chick to date, generally speaking, you're going to have a different experience dating a black girl than a white girl, than a Hispanic girl, than an Asian girl. Not guaranteed. Interpersonally, people can be anything, you know? Um, the only thing race determinatively assigns there really is like skin tone. Even that's not that reliable. Um, but broadly speaking, when you're talking to people, like that is something that you keep in mind. What is this person's gender, sex, height, general attitude, demeanor? Where do they come from? How do they speak? What dialect of English do they speak? What is their but race? What is their a, ethnicity? A of, what is their nationality? A lot of that, a lot of that stuff you meant. Right. A lot of that stuff you mentioned is stuff that you have to learn about that person through uh, interaction. Like, are they an immigrant? Like, that's not something you can just know by looking at someone generally, generally. I mean, if you see someone dressed like a Bedouin, you can maybe assume either they're like doing something really cringy or they're from, you know, uh, a foreign country. But if you meet someone and, and learn about that from them, you're learning something um, fundamental about, you know, their actual real How, experiences. Where, where, whereas if, if you're doing that based on the fact that, oh, well, you know, she's black, so she's probably coming from a single parent household. And uh, so that means I probably shouldn't talk about fathers because if I talk about fathers, she probably doesn't have one. And, oh, that, now I'm being racist. So for me, it's like I – it's such a slippery so, slope to start it's not, talking. Wait, you're, but you're 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 doing it again. You're doing the thing where you weirdly give like race a different thing. You know, you're like, oh, you're learning all this cool stuff about somebody based on other characteristics like their immigration status, whereas race remains this like monolithic thing that you make a snap judgment about, and then every further bit of understanding from it is some kind of racist presumption. You know, um, you I fr I just I think you have like a huge bias towards like race in particular. Um, because what you're taught, like, there's nothing wrong, like, you, 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 like, being a human who exists in the world, you know, you look at a party and you can think, oh, that guy is tall and black and wearing a jersey. I wonder what his interests are. Oh, that girl right it's the there. Jersey. It's the jersey that lets me know, because it could be a short white guy, and if he's wearing a jersey, I'm going to assume that he likes sports because he's wearing that's the jersey. That's a stereotype. Plenty of people wear jerseys. But it's not because of his race. No, it's not because no, of his that's race. What, no, again, you can't, your issue is with race. Um, you, like, This is what I mean. Like, you, the concept of, it's the same. Everything that we do with the other types of stereotyping <laughs> they're, they're not is the, the same, No, though. it is. No, 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 stop. It is. <laughs> it is the same. It is. You have broad ideas and broad assumptions that you make based on a set of characteristics that you identify, and then you learn more about that person when you engage with them directly. Whether they're wearing a jersey or or their race, 
uh, it's the same basic thing. It is not different. It's not different. They are the same thing. Whether or not they're intrinsic doesn't really make a difference either, because whether or not a characteristic okay, is inherently let me, let me intrinsic well, doesn't then, make well, a difference when this. we're talking about how people actually behave. Well, let me throw this one at you. Okay, so you see a tall black guy not wearing a jersey, just wearing a t-shirt and like shorts or whatever, and you assume, oh, he likes basketball. That would be racist, right? Why would I, first of all, why would I assume that? And second of all, even if I did assume that, depending on the context, okay, let's just it say could sports be in general. Let's just say sports in general. He likes sports. In, why would why would you assume that based on him being tall and black? He might, he might, he might hate sports. Tall black people are more likely to participate in sports than other demographics. <laughs> okay, there we see that. And that, I guess you could say, yeah, that kind of triggers me because I, I pardon my French. I well, that right there is a fact of the matter, ain't like, it? Yeah, I, I I fucking hate it when people approach me like, oh, you know, you you, you what what's your favorite rapper? I don't okay, like rap. So Fuck here's rap. the yeah, difference. So, so what I'm saying is, if I'm we not could... talking about approaching them and engaging with them based on the stereotypes, but you can then why keep... even worry about the racial stereotypes to begin because with? Because you can think things without saying them. You can think, for example, <laughs> I'm looking at a so... crowd of people in this party, and based on the characteristics I see, I can get a maybe kind of generalized vibe for what I'm in for if I talk to them. Well, if I look at a guy who's really tall, and he's got really well-defined muscles and whatnot, I can assume that he's strong, but that doesn't mean that he's into sports. I, I might be able to assume that he is physically fit, but that doesn't imply sports. That might be he, he, he's a farmer, if you, you know, if and you he's walk out up in the fields any, working really hard. If you walk up to any guy who's really muscular and ask them what they play, they're not going to get mad at you, just so you know um yes but it, but but they are they are they know that the reason why i'm asking them has nothing to do with their race it has to do with how well they have maintained their body so if i ask someone like oh man how much do you lift they're gonna brag about that because that is something that they've done it is not something intrinsic about who what they are it has I to do with what they have done arguing that you should go up to black people and say hey met any fathers lately you keep assuming that, which is really <laughs> weird. All I'm saying is that in your mind, you are going to have snap judgments about people based on broad characteristics you can see. This is a fact that you cannot get rid of because it is a product of cultural biases that were inscribed I, in you and you I had just, no choice in the matter. You do I it too. Don't know. You do it too. Oh, yes, There's nothing wrong. Various with thinking about various things but but not but not about race yes like, I you don't... do yeah yes no stop yes you do literally everybody does it is impossible to live in a society which is this racialized and not have preconceptions you might ignore or overwrite those preconceptions through force okay, of will fine, or we through... fine then. let's let's use that term sure. overwrite them then if you it can over... be done why That's not what? because this stereotyping that you engage in is fine as long as it's done responsibly. <laughs> it's a basic, no, listen, no, stop. Because you keep deliberately misinterpreting what I'm saying and it's starting to get irritating. The process that my, I'm talking apologies, about, but... which is identifying characteristics and understanding that there's a greater likelihood that a person might be X or Y because of them, you are okay with in every case, except for race. This is because you have a emotional bias against racial stereotyping. Obviously, historically, Racial stereotyping has led to a lot of really negative stuff socially, and I can understand an aversion to it. I am also averse to racial stereotyping. It's a theme of my channel. But in your mind, if you're thinking like, here are three girls that I'm interested in. There's a white one, and there's a black one, and there's an Asian one. If your mind at that moment says, there are probably no differences whatsoever between these three that's women not, based no, on the race. That's wait, not what I'm, wait that's stop, not what stop, I'm saying. stop, stop, stop. You said you said blank uh, slate, right? If your mind goes, no, race that's not has, what I mean by blank slate. I will clarify that after you're finished. But if your mind goes, race has no weight whatsoever on anything with these three women. It's not a product of. It's not who they are. It has nothing to do with who they are. It's irrelevant. It's immaterial. If you say that, not only are you lying to yourself, you're also probably pissing them off. If you walk up to a black woman. And talk with them, and you're like, "Oh yeah, I don't even, I don't think of you as black. You're not even black. What is race? You're not even really black. You're I going never to piss them say off. that because I, I don't know think you... about race. <laughs> you thought about race enough to email me on it. You clearly think <laughs> about race a lot. You just think about not thinking about race, okay? And your thoughts there are the issue. But clearly, you can distinguish between thinking something and saying it. So here's what you can think: 
race tends to have a predictive impact on how people behave because people of different races tend to have grown up in different economic, social, geographic circumstances subjected to different sickers, you know, blah, 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 a whole bunch of shit. And it's okay to keep that in mind. Don't let that affect how you like treat them. Like don't treat them worse or better. Don't bother them. Don't engage in any microaggressions by making weird assumptions and airing your beliefs based on them. It takes a lot of nuance to know how to navigate those situations responsibly. But I don't think that a forced race neutral approach is desirable or beneficial. You're going to cause more problems than you solve that way. I would say it's beneficial when compared to like overt racism, but I think it's worse when compared to a nuanced understanding of the ways in which race affects people's behavior and how to navigate those situations. Okay, so uh, when I say I look at people as a blank slate, what I'm actually saying is I don't allow myself to assume anything about a person because they're Asian or because they are white or because they are black or they're because they're mixed. Because I understand that everyone is an individual. And because everyone is an individual, and sure, of course, nature and nurture, we experience a lot of different changes but, based on our but environment. But you would assume but, that but, a muscular guy is, is interested in sports? I, I didn't say I actually would. I said I would assume that they've, they're, they are athletic. That's what I would assume. I wouldn't assume sports Why? because I know there are Everyone's other ways of being athletic. Because people aren't muscular by nature. Like the human, like calisthenics, like the, the way we get like ripped and shredded, like, you know, Mr. Universe and stuff, like we don't naturally look like that. He could be it disabled. takes a lot of. For all you know, um, he just has a strenuous job and a predisposition towards muscular that's, growth. And, and that's what I mean by athleticism. Like if you have a strenuous job, I would call that a form of athleticism. If you're working out in a farm and you're, you're, you're tilling fields by hand or whatever, that is athleticism. I'm not talking about sports. I'm talking about athleticism. That is what athleticism refers to. But if you mean physical fitness, you can be physically disabled and still be muscular. Any listen, right, any judgment I mean. I you can make about a person, I, mean. I could respond with by saying, <laughs> "Well, everyone's an individual. Uh, you only do that with race because yeah. you have a particular issue with racial stereotypes." Well of, well, of course, I have an issue with racial stereotypes because you know it's 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 caused me a lot of grief over the years. I know but... that's my argument. You personally have an issue with them, and that's why you have a specific bias against them. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but and look, so what I'm saying to to prevent people from having that grief, wouldn't it be much better? if we didn't make assumptions about people until we got to know them. I think that's fine, but that's not the same as what I've described, looking at a room of mixed company and going, race doesn't affect any of these people's behavior. You've gone beyond just don't make assumptions about people based on your race. You're saying shit like race isn't a part of who people are, race isn't even real. Like, your attitude is so well, beyond. race isn't real. Oh, are we a race? Are we race? I know you're not a race realist. Race is I'm, I'm socially real. Here. Okay, yeah, it's yes, obvious. Yes, I agree. I people agree. It's socially real. It a and, because, and the same way that I'm looking, I, am, I eagerly await a, a post-gender world. I also eagerly await a post race Okay, but I don't pretend gender they... doesn't exist now. I treat men and I know, women different I'm not, broadly because I've never, men and women I've never want said to be that race different. doesn't social I've never said that race doesn't socially exist now. What I'm saying is that in order to get to a point where we can have race no longer socially exist, we have to stop obsessing over You are the people's... one obsessing no, no, no. over it. I, what I'm obsessed over is other people obsessing over race. Okay, that's well, that's what I a am convenient excuse. I will admit. I will admit I am obsessed with that because it has been a huge part of my life and a huge roadblock in my life. And so because of that, I'm trying to get people to understand that they do not have to make uh, uh, stereotypical assumptions about anybody based on their race. So if I were to see a crowd of people, one's black, one's Asian, one's Hispanic. I wouldn't approach them and say, ha ha, want to go pick some cotton guys? And then like okay, glance you know, over no, at the but black No, person. but this is, I, this is what I mean. Like, you how, see what I'm saying? Like, no, I, no I, would, I don't I would, because I would, you keep... I would probably start the conversation about, hey, did you see the new Marvel movie? No, I... And, and if so, you know what I mean? It's what, like... What, I, because I, she's white? Listen, no. Um, no, no, I, I said Asian, black, and Hispanic. I didn't say white there. The, listen, the... Um, <laughs> This, now, if I walked it, up to the Asian chick and said, hey, me, you see the new Godzilla movie? That might be a little weird. No, it's fine. I guess. Listen, it, 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 uh, you can just, you, this tells me you're not listening to me. I'm not saying you can walk up to black people and make cotton, I have no idea where we're getting that, okay? Do, do you believe that race is part of who people are 
in a constructed sense, as in it's a part of their identity, and that a person's race is a, 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 a affects who they are. Like it, it's it's uh, it's something in their life that tends to pull people in certain directions. I believe that, in a sense, yes, society has made convinced people that their race matters to who they are. Okay, yes. I but, believe that that is the case. Okay, so... I believe that society has made people believe that and we can undo that damage. Okay, undoing that damage is not right now saying that race doesn't matter or doesn't exist. Um, so, so would you... So if a, if a black woman said, like, hey, being black is part of who I am, a perfectly defensible statement in my mind, would you say, like, no, it's not actually because race is fake? What I would say is, I would say, please elaborate on that. What do you mean by black is who you are? And then they might explain that a little deeper. And then I might say, oh, so what you really mean to say, because I've had this very conversation. And I said to this person, it wasn't a woman, but it was a guy. And I said, so what you mean to say is that your close-knit family unit is really what makes you who you are. And so he said, oh, yeah. And I said, okay, so that doesn't have anything to do with you being black. I said, that has to do with you having a great family. No, that no, no. Like, my race, like she says, the black woman, my race is part of who I am because it affects how I'm treated. It affects the political causes that I'm involved in. It affects my opportunities. It affects the perception that others have of me. It affects the culture that I was born into. Race is a fundamental part of the fabric of my being. It is one of the largest defining characteristics of what I have become and what I am. That would be their answer. The, this magical, this hypothetical black woman that I currently am. Okay, hypothetical black man. Okay, so if someone said all of that and said like, okay, so this is the only, th this is the thing. My, me, my blackness is the thing about me. I would say, well, you're really missing out on a lot of life. Because that, a lot, life has way more to do than your skin color. That right there, what you just did, I would call racism. In the, ab in the, un uh, the, the, the non-euphemistic sense, like proper racism. Because she never said that was all she was, nor that she well, couldn't that, appreciate okay, life. Okay, she just well, said then it that's was a what, part of who she is. Okay, then I misunderstood. You, I, I thought you said this no, was the no, no, biggest no. thing. No, no, wait, it can be. The biggest, like, defining thing uh, is, like, her identity as a black woman has shaped everything oh. about her life. Yeah, that can be a huge, huge, huge part of who she is. But you, because of your attitudes towards race, you think that means she's missing out on something or that she's over fixating or obsessing. Her statement is not prescriptive, it's descriptive. She didn't ask to be born black. Being born black yeah, made- right, Either did I. <laughs> right, being born black made being black the big part of her life that it is. So when you like respond that... with this like, oh, you're missing out, you're assuming that she's saying she over fixates on race. A person oh, can- oh, like, Fair you, enough, you, then, you, then, you, then, then fair enough, fair enough, okay, so. If someone were to say that being black is the defining thing about who they are, I guess I would say, okay, well, fair enough. Like, I, there, there's not, I mean, when someone says, like, for me, if I were to say what the defining thing about me is, let's say it's uh, riding motorbikes. If I said riding motorbikes is the defining thing about who I am. I mean, yeah, sure, fair enough. I can't say that that's not true. But the reason why that person, I think, be would believe that their blackness is the old, the 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 defining the 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 cap the cornerstone upon which their whole life is built. That person has feels that way because society has made them feel that way. That is like, the case people, for people everything. Aren't... That's the case right. for everything. No, no, no. People aren't born. People are not born knowing what their what their race is people aren't born right, so, knowing anything all meaning is socially exactly described. right so what i and exactly and that's the good news the good news is that we can we can build a society I, and I believe we can we can build a society where people won't feel as though being black having this skin tone is the defining feature of who they are i agree but that doesn't change the society we live in now. And if you were right, to... but but in order to change it, we have to do something. What, no, but what, you're what doing do the do wrong then? thing. You're you're feigning liberal colorblindness. This is the wrong no, direction no. to take things. No, yes, oh yes, yes. Your this liberal colorblindness is not the direction to take things. All of the big advocates for civil rights over the past several centuries have they been race neutral? No, 
You ask Martin Luther King Jr. or Malcolm X, you know, well, how do you feel about being black? Would you say it's an unimportant and trivial aspect of your life? No, of course not. It is not a de-investment in the concept that awards us victory. It is an investment in the positive attributes of the concept. Otherwise, why would I make videos on positive masculinity? Why would I make okay. videos on well, what it well, means to be a good here's, example here's, here's, to be a here's man? Here's a question. Here's here's a question I have for you as a black guy to a white guy. Tell me a positive aspect in America, in the Western world, of being black. Enlighten me. I can't find one, and I've looked for my whole life. It doesn't matter. Again, okay, you're making so, you're so, wait. You're looking for a prescriptive argument. It's completely irrelevant. If I were black, I could you give just you said wait, that wait, you wait, were wait, 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 wait. About... If I were black, first of all, I could tell through this conversation that you don't think there's anything positive about being black. Okay, I know which side in the aisle you fall on. It's pretty clear from your biases. But if you were to ask me, like, well, what are the good things? It doesn't matter, and I don't have to answer that. I'm not making an argument that it's so good to be black. I'm making the argument that. And listen, buddy, whether you like it or not, your race is also a pretty big part of who you are. It clearly has shaped a lot of your psychosis. Um, in the case of this, this hypothetical black woman here, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a matter of whether or not it's so good for her to be that way. It was the circumstances of her birth that determined that being black would be so important to her. Nothing can change that. Nothing will change that. She will die feeling that way. And given those circumstances, I don't think there's anything wrong with acknowledging and working within that. Also, I'm getting a lot of static from your side of things. Hello? Uh, yes, I'm still here. Oh, sorry. Your microphone was getting staticky out of nowhere. Uh, anyway. I think the, uh, the wire for my headphone was like touching the uh, mic. Sorry about that. Oh, gotcha. Um, but do you understand what I am saying here? It's not about whether it, yeah, or not yeah, it's I... good to be black. It's just a, it's, it's part of their life. Being white is a huge part of my life. Do you know how often I think, oh, I am white? Never. I don't think of myself as a white guy because I live in my own head. I think of myself as a stupid dipshit. Um, but being white was a huge part of everything that let me be what I am. I'm a what? I'm a gamer. Why am I a gamer? My father and grandfather were both into tech. Why was my grandfather living off a sailor's pension able to assemble um, uh, uh, computers and teach my father or to teach me, you know, uh, how to get into that sort of stuff. Do you think my father, my grandfather, I mean, would have been able to make the rank of commander in the Navy as a black man? Unlikely. Do you think my father would have been able to get into the VFX industry right when it was kicking off in Hollywood, thus instilling an interest in tech on his part that he would pass down to me? Nope. Not as a black person, he wouldn't have. Oh, at least it's I not know, likely. I don't know about that. I don't know no, about that. No, it's I mean, not. There were no, black no, no. People working at ILM. I no, mean, you stop. Know, I, no, this is you being racist. You're denying the effects of systemic racism. No, right no, I, I get it. It was more difficult. I understand that. My grandfather had to sit on the so back that's of the, the bus. Answer. I understand that. But what I'm saying is, what I am saying is, is that now is the time. No, 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 no. To don't, start, no, no. Don't, to don't, don't, start. Don't, 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 don't. No, stop. Don't. We're not starting. We're finishing. It's been two hours. Yes, I understand that. I understand. Everyone I, I, yeah, can I, be anything. There were Jews in Nazi command, okay? But if you were to say, um, uh, well, just because a person was Jewish in Poland in 1942 doesn't mean, like, you know, obviously we stereotype. And it's good to stereotype when those stereotypes help you arrive at reasonable and uh, utilitarian conclusions. A lot of what I am today is shaped by my race in a passive sense. I didn't have anything to do with it and I didn't have any say in it. But because I was born white in Beverly Hills to well-off parents with an interest in tech, now I'm twice as well-off as they ever were using technology that didn't exist when I was born. All of this is heavily weighted by my race, and it is the height of arrogance for me to look down at everything that I've done and to go, oh, well, me being white had nothing to do with it. Sure, maybe it didn't in an active sense. Maybe I didn't but, actively but I think, weaponize I think, it. I think you've, you've missed, I'm not saying that, uh, well, of course, if you're a black guy born in the 1930s, of course, life is going to be way harder than if you were white. I mean, obviously, I'm not talking about like ex the 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 experience. I'm not saying that being black makes you a different experience. I mean, obviously, I, I got bullied because explicitly because I was black. What I'm saying is that that does not have to define me. Like that doesn't have to be who I am. Like, of course, it you affected my experiences, yourself. and I don't want to. And I don't want to. You know. To, to, like I said, you know, my grandfather grew up in the Great Depression. You know, he sat on the back of the bus. He was there during the Civil Rights Movement. You know, I, I get that. He experienced racism when he was in the military. I understand that. You I'm can not define yourself that. however you want, but the universe sculpted you how it did, and your race was uh, yes, a part I of that. Yes, I get that. 
I, I, I get that. I get that. And 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 I appreciate your time. I don't to go no, over. No, no, it's fine. You you, you don't need to apologize for the time spent. I engage with the conversation, but you can choose to define yourself however you want. Like and that's, that's what fine. I want people to do. That's so, that's all I'm advocating. But that's what for. the that's black all woman I'm advocating did. For. The black woman chose the characteristics that were important to her. You've done fair, it. fair enough. Like I said, left left leaning libertarian. If you want to identify as your race, I just want people to know. And, and I say this because a lot of people don't I, – I think they don't know, just based on the conversations I've had with them, that they don't know that that doesn't have to be the defining characteristic of who – it doesn't have to be. If, 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 that's, if that's what you want and that's what you're proud of, that's great. I applaud that because it's a personal decision that you've made. But I don't want people to think that because I'm black – or because I'm Asian, or because I'm whatever, or because I'm white, that I have to define myself, myself. You don't have find to, myself that way. But you have to That's, understand. That is my advocacy. That's all I ever want for people is to like to look at their life and go, what do I want to be okay. the defining aspect okay. of who I am? But you're assuming they're not making the choice. You paternalistically look at the black person who thinks of themselves as black, who identifies well, and the, as and the, black. In the case of this, in the case of this conversation, in the case of this conversation where you're the magical black person, <laughs> which, which is funny because that's actually a trope, the magical black person. Do you know that one, the literary trope? Uh, I'm familiar. It's like, yeah. You know, yeah. But anyway, um, you're the magical black person. In this case, of this conversation, yes, I assumed that 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 you were that you were saying that. But if someone like were to come to me and say, "Hey, you know, you know, I I I just like being," I mean, I've of course, if someone says I like being a black person and I like being black, whatever, it's like that's fair enough. That's that's what you want to do. What would a black person uh, have to do to make you look at them and think, oh, they identify with being black, but it's inauthentic? They would be happier if they didn't. What do they have to do to make you think like that's what they should do? They should do something. Oh, else? I, I don't. I because I'm not inside anyone else's head but my own. I mean, I don't assume like like when people like like for instance, I used to be religious, and so you know it was very unfulfilling, and now I'm not religious, and so I feel more fulfilled. But I can't look at a religious person and say, oh, they're really not. Fulfilled. Phil, they don't really, they don't really, no, no, of, of, of course they probably do. You know, I, I'm not in their head. I mean, I can only believe what they tell me about that. And so if a black person does tell me that, like, yeah, I assume it's genuine. I assume that they really are happy with that description of who they are. Of course, like, like I'm not a, <laughs> I know, I, I know, I, 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 like I said, I don't want to come off as some like right wing chud no, or I, something I like that. I get that. I like, just think, know. I think for a lot of black people, it's not really a choice and they have to roll with it because if you're, if you're black, if you're like a dark skinned black person in America and you're just like, I just choose not to identify with being black. I'm simply a person like good fucking luck. That just seems like a, like an exhausting, futile effort at ignoring reality. Obviously, a ton of your life is going to be shaped by your race. And because black people can't escape the social condition of being black, um, oftentimes I identify that. I believe with me. It. I understand that. <laughs> it's the common plight of the minority. White people are heavily defined by their race, but don't actively identify with it unless they're usually explicitly white supremacist. Black people, as members of the racial underclass, frequently identify with their race, in large part because a proactive adoption of racialized characteristics and archetypes will usually serve as a defense to the accusation of a passive deference to those archetypes. Or to put it another way, a black person would rather be into basketball because they're aware of the trope and they'd like it anyway, than uh, by pretending to be unaware of the trope and just falling into it perceptively uh, by accident. Um, it's, a, it's a way, it's, it's, a, it's a type of, okay, uh, so of self-awareness. I I it's like a preemptive I think, I think you, Okay, I think I get that. Okay, so, so what you're saying is, like, it's like, okay, so people are going to, it's like Zootopia, right? I don't know if you've seen that movie, where Nick the Fox was like, okay, if everyone's going to think I'm a conniving fox, I might as well lean into that and make that like, you know, it'd be really good at it. And like, he was like this super good, like, you know, he, he, I wouldn't call him a huckster. Like he, he was doing a bunch of stuff and, and whatnot. So I guess that's, is that what you're saying? You're saying like, like that is, that is a, a better mo I'm way saying, forward. I'm saying like, if you're like, if you're black, um, and, and you like basketball, which, which, I am. A, which a lot of, <laughs> okay, no, I know, but you know, I mean, broadly, if you're, if, if a hypothetical person is black and that hypothetical person likes basketball, okay. Which a lot of black people do because there are a lot of right. fucking hoops you can shoot in the, um, run down, uh, suburb, you know, sort of adjacent inner city districts, you know, um, because there's nothing right, else yeah, to do with right, all the broken right. parking lots. Um, and if you're in the which basketball, which is why we need to fix, you know, our infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah. Way. Of course. Yeah. So, so no one can play basketball. Um, but, uh, no, <laughs> no I, so that everyone can play basketball <laughs> with, with, um, so like you, you have like two options, right? 
It's like, okay, no, I'm going to use a more direct example, okay? Because this is a really easy one, okay? Um, black people exist, I think. Um, also, there are two foods that exist. Possible. Watermelon and fried chicken. Now, if you're black <laughs> and you're older than two... No, this is true, and I've seen this happen a million times. Okay. If, you're older than, just... if you're older than two years old and you're black, you know about all the racist shit with um, watermelon and fried chicken. They, they know, right. they all know. Now, go on social media and see black people eating watermelon and fried chicken, which, uh, as human beings, they've been known to eat sometimes. Rather than pretending the trope doesn't exist, hmm, what a lovely fried chicken this is, you know? They lean the fuck into it, and they're hilarious for doing so. Um, because, and they're right to do this, because society at large, the people who are going to give black people shit for eating fried chicken and watermelons are going to do so no matter how the black people do it. But there's a huge difference as the black person from trying to kowtow to the expectations of white supremacy by pretending the system doesn't exist, the boot over your head doesn't exist, and just, you know, eating it normally or whatever, um, and acknowledging that system exists and spiting it by hyper-aggressively playing into the tropes. Which is why a lot of black comedy is about essentially acting out a minstrel show as the black person. It's the height of black comedy, or at least a height. It's very popular with black people. And the reason for that is because if they can't stop that system from existing, they can satirize it. And one of the best ways they can do that is by taking away the right to do minstrelly from oh, white I, people I, and doing it themselves. Oh, you know? I'm all for I'm all for satirization. Like, I, that's that's really fun. But I do it this myself. Can uh, only happen, um, but <laughs> because they're black and identify with being black. This can none of this analysis or engagement can happen from a perceptively race neutral attitude. They have to dive into the racial stereotyping fully. They have to immerse themselves in order for any of this to work. Key and Peele does not work race neutrally. Um, they need to completely, fully be aware of all of these tropes and stereotypes and use them to produce anti-racist comedy. Because by acknowledging oh, yeah, them, I, you can tear them apart. Yeah, lampooning, lampooning racism through, you know, that kind of comedy is, is hilarious. I love that. I, I'm, I'm just, for me, I'm just saying like that, to me, that just feels a little different from... I don't know. It just feels different to me. I, I, I guess, I guess my, my brain, brain broken. I just don't understand. I know what, I, that's, what, that's what, fine. <laughs> I will say this though. I bet you that a lot of the interaction you see between interracial couples is that lampooning, you know, um, trust me as a person who's been in a relationship with a black woman. Um, if, if there is no lampooning taking place in the context of that relationship, I don't even know if it's interracial. I don't even know how you could have as a white guy, a relationship with a black woman without be becoming a, like further aware of A, a collection of racial tropes, B, all the ways in which they're fucking stupid, and C, the ways in which you can quickly satirize them through invocation. Um, I, it, I guess for me, what I, what I up, tended you know? to do... Yeah, yeah. I guess when I when I was typically faced with you know race racial stereotypes or whatever, yeah, I can I can make fun of the stereotype and make a joke out of it. Um, but I I just didn't I don't know I didn't I wouldn't call that leaning in to it or whatever. Like it wasn't like a a conscious effort to you know like the stereotype that mixed people you know mixed race guys don't like black women you know which is the stereotype that exists. And it's like you know that. I make fun of that all the time because, you know, Meg the Stallion is the most attractive human being on the planet. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, it, 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 making, you know, jokes out of things like that is one thing, but I don't, I don't, I just don't see that the same way. I guess maybe it's because my, uh, you know, my, my autism or, or, or whatever, I just can't see it the way, the way most people do. I just, it's just weird to me. So uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it, it does trigger me a little bit, you know, or, or a lot of it when I see people make talking about it a lot, especially when it's off the cuff, because yeah, usually a joke is done in context with something else. Something else happened that precipitated the joke. Um, but, but a lot of times it's, it's not, uh, it's not, I don't know. A lot of times it just seems random and I'm like, why did you bring that up just now? You know, it's kind of a weird time to bring whatever it is you just brought up <laughs> to, no, to, I, to me. I get that. Um, this has been a, a, a remarkable conversation in more ways than one. I really appreciate you coming on seriously. Um, it is uh, definitely yeah. been interesting. 
Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, and hopefully, I wasn't like hyper giga cringe or anything. Um, well, I, but, I, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I genuinely believe that a lot of our difference in opinion stems from like life experience, like personal bias type stuff. But I'm happy to hear your take, and I'm happy to be given, I guess, the the chance to think on my take, and that stuff's valuable, even if we do disagree. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for having me on. I just wanted to say, everyone, uh, uh, vote. Please vote in the midterms. Vote blue. I know the Democrats aren't that great, but please, like, the, I'm I'm here in 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 the deep South, and you know we're we're kind of screwed down here, so we're kind of relying on the Yankees to like do their part again and like save the union. Hear that, Yanks? Thank you, man. <laughs> All right. Take care. Thank you so much. You take care. You too. Well, that was an interesting conversation. I mean that sincerely without euphemism. I don't think I've ever talked about that stuff before. Um, yeah, wow. Okay, like, I guess, so just, just to make sure that I'm not, like, misinterpreted, because I'm sure people are going to be mad at me over this stuff, um, the point that I'm trying to make is that snap stereotyping is an inevitable, intrinsic, and unavoidable part of everyone's behavior. It's not, it's not something you can code yourself out of. It's a basic part of our lizard brain. Literally, like it's further rooted back than what you're capable of undoing with socialization. What we choose to ascribe like attention to can vary socially, but the basic impulse is consistent. And as long, I tried to demonstrate this with the story of my former coworker in the unlicensed firearm, but like the basic gist is, I think you should treat everyone the same, you know? Everyone should be treated the same. But obviously that's like a simplistic statement, right? Like there's no way that ethics can be solved with that one statement, everyone should be treated the same, right? In reality, the same varies tremendously. I don't treat my mother and father and best friend and neighbor the same, of course, because I have different relationships with all of them. And I know different things about all of them. And that knowledge informs how I treat them. And sometimes the knowledge that I have on people isn't directly from them. It's from like, base, like basic stereotyping that you engage in, which we do all the time. Uh, a person's size and demeanor, the expression on a person's face, you know? There's a reason we talk about resting bitch face. Um, and it's a, um, you, you know, like if a person's giving you kind of a mean look, right? Like, well, you don't know they're really doing that. They could just have that face. But I think it's okay if a person's giving you a mean look to like, worry about that a bit, you know? If a person's staring at you, are they like fixating on you or are they like just autistically unaware of what staring at a person comes off as? Or is there somebody right behind you? Or we do this kind of um, the stereotyping all the time. It's, it's critical to how we engage with others. I don't think you can really engage with people if you don't do this because all of your, I guess, opening lines with the person would kind of fall apart, right? What would you, how would you open with a person if you were not willing to make any assumption? You can't ask them uh, any questions because you're assuming that they speak English, right? <laughs> like, you know, starting from there, right? Like, ah, this person is here with me in America. So because they're in America, they probably speak English. That's not true. I grew up in LA. There are Asian immigrants and, 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 and people from the border who don't speak English at all. Like what? You know, so of course we, we, we do the nod, yes, but when you do the nod, you're assuming that the person you're nodding at isn't me, and therefore uh, there's a possibility you're stereotyping by assuming that they'll understand. Um, the um, <laughs> the uh, um, we, we, we do stuff like this all the time. And in a racialized sense, for the most part, overwhelmingly, I don't think that like racial stereotyping leads down good roads. I don't think that it like if if you're if you're thinking in your head like I should treat a person this way because of their race, like 99.9% .9 of the time, shelve it, shelve the thought. It's probably not good. But the more like nuance you get, the more of an understanding you get on these ideas, I think, the, the more you can kind of acknowledge that there are some basic differences. Um, if you live in a very multicultural area, like a big city, Los Angeles, Seattle, the decorum and the way in which you treat people is going to vary a lot based on who you're talking to. Uh, for example, when I went to uh, Santa Monica Community College, the bus route that I would take to get back to Beverly Hills, uh, the stops that I would take would sometimes have me in the company of college students, and they would sometimes have me in the company of um, uh, Hispanic day laborers. And I would talk with both groups, you know, sometimes, not every time, of course. And obviously, the way you're going to talk to people who are clearly college students is going to be different from the way you would talk to people who are clearly Hispanic day laborers. Um, there's a massive difference. You talk with people at the bus, no, while waiting at the bus stop. 
Um, so how do you even tell that a person's a Hispanic day laborer? How do you know that a person is a college student? Well, if you're waiting at a bus stop right outside a college and they have a book bag, okay. And depending on what part of Los Angeles you're in, if you're if there's like a group of like three guys who are wearing white t-shirts and uh, a, a sort of like khaki pants and are carrying a toolbox and have paint stains all over their shirt, and they're Hispanic, you know, like you know what I mean? Who who like who like if I'm talking with both of these groups, like how am I going to talk? What am I going to talk about? You can believe that there's a race neutral, um, like a perfectly race neutral way to navigate these situations without coming across like an alien or whatever. But in reality, I don't know if that's necessarily anti-racist. Isn't the anti-racist thing the idea of like um, being aware enough of these tropes, these conditions that you can navigate and understand them? Isn't that the whole thing with like microaggressions, right? Like we know that it's kind of a microaggression or whatever to go up to like an Asian person and go like, oh, so where are you from? And they're like Minneapolis. And you're like, okay, but where are you really from? Like that attitude, the idea that that's problematic is kind of rooted in a knowledge on your part that what you're doing is motivated by biases towards recent immigrants, you know, um, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Does everyone get where I'm coming from? Right. This this to me strikes exactly the same as like the whole um, black crime thing, right? The racism isn't saying, or sorry, the racism isn't knowing or or understanding the black people, violent crime, blah blah, thirteen fifty, whatever. The racism is believing that's because of some genetic or intrinsic thing, right? You can, in a perfectly anti-racist way, you can believe that black people commit more violent crime on average because you know why that is, and in fact. Um, uh, 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 not knowing anything about this, completely dismissing the whole black crime, like, oh, that's all fake. Haven't we talked with lefties before who are like that, saying it's racist to even say that black people commit more violent crime? Well, in a way, you're kind of serving the interests of the racist people there, because racists want you to act like it's some truth you can't overcome. You know what I mean? Like, they like it when we treat 1350, like it's some uh, d like non-falsifiable defeater to our arguments, and therefore we have no choice but to pretend it's not real. They benefit from our abstainiousness, whereas a willingness to engage, I think, um, is uh, uh, you know is 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 a you know more pointed and more anti-racist. The awareness there is in service of anti-racism, much in the same way that I think an awareness of the general experiences that different people based on their race have had in America. And, you know, how that can affect your understanding of them. I think that that can be used in an anti-racist way. Uh, of course, much like 1350, if you want to be racist with it, you can. And you can just see black guy and you can just think, uh, basketball, fried chicken, watermelon, grape tree, cricket, and your brain can just sort of just, just spark and short circuit or whatever, like if you want to. But, you know, that's that's like a, that's a choice on your part to use that information in a racist way or to use that sort of info gathering method in a in a racist way. That was a good convo. But do you actually think people fetishizing race and relationship like it's a super uncommon thing? Dude, I'm sure people in interracial relationships fetishize, fetishize race in one way or another all the time. What I don't think is that it means they love each other less. I don't think those things are related, you know? What I think, like, you know, like, they can just, like, like, why not, right? Like, dude, if you're fucking someone and you're both down, fetishize everything. Well, what, like, what, in that context, when we say fetishize X, we only really mean, like, get off to this thing about your partner, right? Like, fuck it, yeah, oh, your wrists are so cool, ooh, you know, fuck, we have, fucking go, you know? Um, yeah. Where does it get weird, though? Dude, you're having sex with somebody. Sex is weird and cringe. Okay, fucking go for it. As long as your partner's down, like, whatever. Sex is super cringe already. It's fine. It's fine. Just go go hog wild. As long as they're down, it's cool. Yeah, but it's not always such a neutral thing, like libertarian dudes seeking out Asian women because of their perceived submissiveness. Yeah, and I pointed that out. That's racism, and I think that's bad. Again, I'm not, I, I, I was clear in the conversation. I don't think that every instance of racial stereotyping is defensible, not even close. The majority aren't. And I think that oftentimes when people are interested in a given race of a partner, 
um, racism is what motivates it. Um, but all I ask is that like people be introspective when they do that, right? Like if you're a white guy and you really want an Asian girl to get with or whatever, I think you should like if you want an Asian girlfriend, like okay, like okay. I mean, if she wants to be your girlfriend, like okay, you know, like I don't think you should not get an Asian girlfriend, you know. I just think you should be introspective. Like, why do you want an Asian girlfriend? Is it because you just find Asian people attractive? Well, that's fine. I mean, whatever. Being Asian tends to carry a set of physical characteristics that you might arbitrarily like. That's totally fine, you know, whatever. Um, uh, 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 you, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> uh, but but if in your mind, if you're like, well, I want an Asian girlfriend because they're submissive and because they're not corrupted by Western feminism and because she will make me my kimchi when I ask her to and blah, blah, blah. you know, like if it's stuff like that, then you know, well, that's that's pretty racist, right? You, at that point, at that point, you're not. So here's a critical difference. At that point, you're not just believing there might be differences about a person based on their race. You're you're prescriptively seeking out people of a given race because of that characteristic, which is different. If you want a submissive wife, fuck, go on Twitter. Plenty of people do, okay? But there's a big difference between saying, I want a submissive wife who will make my kimchi, and I want an Asian wife because she will be submissive and make me kimchi. Do you see the difference? There's nothing necessarily wrong with wanting the characteristics, even if I think it's weird. Um, the problem is that they're using race as like a direct shorthand to get to those characteristics in a prescriptive sense. Uh, it's not It's not even just saying like, well, there's a slightly higher chance of an Asian woman being submissive, blah, 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 you know, whatever. Which, by the way, every Asian woman I've ever had any kind of affiliation or relationship with has been mega aggro. So I don't, I don't even know where that comes from. You know, whatever. I'm not, okay. <laughs> Uh, you know. Uh, uh. Asian Americans? Well, I do live in America. anti convent five bucks. I briefly heard this in the debate. What is a magical black person? The term, the trope, is magical Negro. That's the term of the trope. You know, that's literally the term of the trope. Um, but, uh, it's, it's, it's an old stereotype in media. I mean, it goes back hundreds of years. Basically, it's the idea of, like, you'll have a story where the protagonist is white, like, everyone's white or whatever, but there will be a black person, and the black person will possess, like, mystical knowledge of some kind that's very helpful. Usually, they're going to be, like, very helpful, very, like, kind and decent or whatever, but they do it in kind of, like, kind of like a nanny way, right? Like, they do it in, like, a servile sense. So, it's not only that they're helpful, they also don't have any individual agency, and the help that they offer is just kind of uh, like it's like it's their job to help. Does that make any sense? Like it's not. Does, does does this make any sense? Like it's not just a helpful magical black person. It's like a specific trope, you know. Um, yeah, it's a pretty common one too, though less common now. Were you going to talk about the UK? Nope. That convo went on for over two hours. Ha <laughs> ha. Have a fun day. I'm sending you over. I'll stream tomorrow. You fuckers. I don't want to hear any complaining, okay? We've done like maybe actually eight debates in the past week, okay? We're back, we're back on fire, okay? This train, uh, this is a runaway train with the with the 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 brake shaft broken, all right? We're we're doing good, okay? Uh